guys. We love that you're watching online, but we don't like the fact that you didn't sit in the seats that are here today, but we get that. Right? I feel like you know, like the pastors are always like, hey, Ethan, hey, buddy. Okay, so I want to show you guys something. I graphed out Tammy's results here. Uh, there we go. That's when we first met, 2017. She came to this event, right? Thyroid. Thyroid event. And uh, also said, hey, uh, I have diabetes. Can you help with that as well? And what do you think I said? Sure. Yes. Okay. Now, some of you might be like, well, how, if she has thyroid, how are you going to get rid of diabetes? I'll, I'll teach you this. Okay. So I met her, and fasting sugars at the time were 145. A1C was what? Sure. Is that high or is that high? Uh, okay, weight was 201, body fat percent, so 48% of her body at the time was fat. Okay, then look, guys, how, how many months is this? Wow. And what happened? Wow. Wow. So I want to ask her how she did that. Would that be okay with you guys? Yes. Because I didn't do it. She did it, right? So can you tell us just briefly, like, A, what were you doing before we met to manage and control thyroid, diabetes, that kind of thing? I'm like, I'm just waiting to speak when she goes to. Before I met Dr. Ernest, I went to a family doctor who put me on metformin for the diabetes. And at that time, I think my sugar levels, even with the medication, was like 130. And it, he kept trying to increase the medication and also gave me medication for high blood pressure at that time. And just told me to continue to eat carbs and protein and whatever, you know, for lunch and dinner. And didn't suggest to even lower the carbs. Because um, the men should do that, right? Right. Like you don't have to change your diet, just take the meds, right? Okay, let me ask a question. What did they say was causing this? They told me that it was hereditary because my grandfather had it and he was taking injections. I remember as a young child watching him do that. And they just said, I'll always have it the rest of my life because you got it from your, you know, family. Anybody heard that? Yeah. Okay. So is it genetic? No. No. Look, I had somebody on Facebook, who, who saw the ads we were running? They were a little, like, a little abrasive, weren't they? Some people said. <laughs> who saw the one with uh, Randy Savage, who was like, you know, pointing up, and I was like, hey, diabetes can be as awkward as a 1980s wrestler? <laughs> <laughs> who saw the one with the ice cream scoop, where it was scooping ice cream, anybody see that? You know how many people said, you can't prove this diabetes, this is insane. You should never go to a chiropractor for diabetes. I agree, you shouldn't. So I'm gonna teach you what we do. Okay? I don't heal her. Who heals her? God. God through her heals her. But here's the ultimate question. Why wasn't God healing her before I met her? Lack of knowledge. Uh, first, lack of knowledge. Second? She wasn't cooperating with him. Yes. What was she doing that was interfering with his will and her body? She wasn't letting her body heal itself. Why? Why not? Because, yeah, look, when you take a pill, will that interfere with normal function of the body? Yes. Yeah. Does it make you healthy or does it make you sick? Then why do we take them to get healthy? Because we are crazy in our head. I love that. We are literally crazy in our head. So the first thing that I did was I implanted a new thought. Are we okay, Robert? Good to go? We implanted a new thought. You guys understand? And then she started. Beliefs. Don't worry, he's trying to fix the audio. We changed the beliefs. And then guess what? Now let me ask you a question. What did I tell you was the cause of your diabetes? You remember? Three things are foundations for health. Alignment. Well, spinal. Spinal alignment. Yes. Second. Oh, look at that. I should know that. It's been like two years, guys. She forgot. You guys will all forget by the time you leave here today, too. Don't worry about it. was contributing to yeah. it, right? So was it difficult to do what I asked you to do for those, you know, 90 days? Okay. Was it different? Mindset. It was different, but you have to change your mind. And my whole thing was I wanted to lose the weight, not I, I thought if I lost the weight, the diabetes was going to go away. But Yeah, yeah. I now, we took this picture on July or June 17th, and that's her husband standing behind her. Is he here today? I don't yeah. see him. No. Okay. So we took this photo because her medical doctor ran the test, not me. I was scheduled to do it at like the 90th day, and he ran them a little earlier because I think you had an appointment or something like that. And do you remember what you told me they said about your lab? Can you share yeah, this with them? He, he looked at the numbers and said, looked at the other one that said 7.2, and then looked at the new one and said, wait a minute, is this the right patient? And he looked at it, yeah, uh, the 
just can't be right in that short of time to go from 7.3 to that 10.3. So should we need to run it again? Run it again. And it came back. Confirmed. Yeah. So they were like, we don't even believe this. The lab is so good, it's not even humanly possible, so this must be a lab error. Crazy, isn't it? Now, now, can I be transparent? Okay. So we follow up on a regular basis, and when we did your next blood test, we were like, whoops, 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 because what's happening? You got really good, didn't we? And she lost a ton of weight, lost a lot of body fat, and then we did a check-in, and we were like, oh, shoot, whoops. And sh you know what? Can I be transparent? Don't we sometimes kind of fall off the wagon? Right? Like, like we lose 35 pounds, and all of a sudden we're like, oh, I forgot that I'm supposed to eat well, so I just stopped eating well, and I gained all the weight back. Anybody? Has anybody fallen off the wagon before? Even I have. Anybody else? You guys are all lying over here. Look, no hands are up. <laughs> but in transparency, she comes to me, and she goes, Dr. Ernst, like, I admit, like, I need some help. Now, we like, I didn't say, like, ooh, let's put you back where we were. We were like, you know what? Let's knock this sucker out of the park. And we did something wild, didn't we? Do you mind sharing? How many days does I ask you to fast? First, first go round. The first time was seven days. Seven days. Yeah. We got better numbers. Right. And then I said, eat. Yeah, eat and then do it again. And then do it again. Right. And then eat and do eat it again. again. Right. Now, you guys tell me. You guys tell me, okay? I know it's slightly cut off. That's the one that we just ran. And I, it wasn't a blood test yet. These are my in-office tests, which I'll explain. Is that not like, that's the best we've seen. So and, when you wake up in the morning, and, and, and I guarantee you, when we run another lab, it might even be 5.0 or 5.2. So, like, did the diabetes disease leave her body? But wait a second. It's genetic. <laughs> so I have people who still, they'll be, on, they'll be on this page going, this is ridiculous. You're not a medical doctor. I don't want to be. You can't claim this. Yes, I can. You guys understand? So, like, you have the power inside of you to get rid of diabetes. You have the power inside of you to get rid of thyroid issues, blood pressure, cholesterol, you ca cancer, whatever. You can do it. I can't. If I could go like this, and she'd be healed, how many people would be here today? Oh, the whole world would be trying to be here today. But so she can do it herself, right? Because God's in here, yes? This is what I believe. And God, you guys all say, I'm waiting for God to heal me. He's going, I'm waiting for you to stop eating brownies. Like, you guys get it? <laughs> you can do this. Okay? Is there anything just before we begin that you would like to share? Think of it like this. We, the blue folder people I've never met, like, run labs, been in the office. What would you say to them, like, right now, like, as we're starting? What would you say? Like, put yourself in the mindset of, of somebody coming going, oh, I'm here because I, I want to learn about how to get rid of diabetes. What would you say? I would say that you can do it the right way. I would say that there are great people out there that can do this. But, you know, that Dr. Ernst is going to show you how I can tell my body to do this the best way I can. Let's, you know, take some changes in your mind, change your eating habits, but as, as you go, because that's going to save my life. And I know I've done some of it. God's done a lot of it. And, and can I say something real quick? I know you're going to applause. Just a second. Okay, do I have a chiropractic degree? Yes. Do I practice chiropractic? No. I know it's going to shock you. I have to explain that. I do not practice chiropractic because chiropractic has been tainted and has been, I don't want to say that word, but has been modified to be medicalized into, oh, you hurt? How do you feel now? Uh-uh. That's not how it works. You're going to learn this today, okay? Can I practice medicine in this state of North Carolina? Yes, but I can't write a prescription because I'm not an MD. I have what's called a PSCD. It's a pastoral license to teach you how to heal yourself. It's an actual doctorate degree, but it's not in medicine. It's in psychology teaching. It's like, I want to show you how to fix it. People come to me, so they say, well, I want to get well, but I just don't know, not necessarily how, I don't know what to do. Would you guys agree? I know I can get well. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. So I will say, do this. And sometimes it's a little weird when I say that. Like, yeah. hey, do this. Because you're like, what? That's not what my doctor says. I get that. Okay? You can follow their way 
or you can follow his way. Does that make sense? Not my way, his way. Are you guys okay with that? Can we give her a huge round of applause, right? <laughs> so what I want to do today, A, is have some fun. Like, I'll try to make you guys laugh a little bit. But at the same token, I want it to be serious, because is diabetes serious? Yes. Like, it's super bad, right? Super bad, is that a phrase? That's like a kid's show, isn't it? Super bad? Super, super why? Super why, sorry. I, I have a two-year-old, and we were watching the lecture last night. OK, so <laughs> what I want to teach you is this concept that technically, watch, this is the word. So like, guys, like, take out your pens and papers, take a ton of notes, write stuff down. I know she said to turn your phones off. Did she? Did she say turn your phone off? But like, just don't vibrate, because you might love to take photos, right? You guys are going to email me and say, hey, can I have your slides? No. You realize this is like 10 gigabytes for this file? It's not going to work. But if you say, like, hey, can I have the slide that shows the terminology? Yeah, maybe. But take a photo of it, OK? Like, I'm totally fine if you do that. OK? Facebook, love you guys. Where are you from? Tell us the city, state. Ask questions. I will respond to all of them. And listen, all of you, if you want to watch this later, you go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash askdrernst. It's the key for everything. It's on the logos. It's everywhere. Like, if you go to Walmart, tell them, hey, I have a coupon code. It might work. Ask Dr. Ernst. You guys get what I mean? Like, it works on a lot of websites, just so you know. You get discounts on all kinds of stuff. So if you're here today, right, I'd like to say, because you want to get rid of diabetes, oh, we're going to do a lot more than that. A lot more than that. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to know, like, let's take 30 seconds. Those of you who are brave enough to raise a hand and tell me what you're here for, please tell me why you came today. Anybody? Yes. OK, so she, can you guys, I don't know if you can all hear her. She said, I came to learn more about myself and my health, and I've been diagnosed as pre-diabetic. And what do you want? OK, so she's saying, I want to get rid of this condition naturally. Is, would anybody else agree, like, that might be what you're here for? Yes. OK, great. Somebody tell me something other than that. Tired of taking medicines. <laughs> anybody else? OK, can I set you free from the medication route? Because guess what? Can I be honest with you guys? The meds you're taking right now, are they making you healthier or sicker? I've already asked this. Sicker, so you should stop them when? Now. now. But what's going to happen when I say stop? Right now. How many did you take? Do you mind my asking? Two. Two? Stop them right now. Just don't take them anymore. First thought. Be truthful. My sugars are going to go up. I can't stop. <laughs> right? I've had some people tell me, if I stop, I'm going to die. I was like, really? Really? You're not going to die. Okay. So she wants to get off meds. She wants to let her body heal by itself. Somebody else. There was a hand over here. Somebody had a hand up. Same thing. Give me something different because you guys, look, you, you all want the same thing. I know you do. Yes. So that, yeah, you know what that, yeah. Okay, hold on. Can I, can I be honest with you? Okay. You're using words maybe somebody doesn't understand. Does everybody here know what he means when he says, I was type 2? Is there anybody? Raise your hand if you're like, I have no clue what type 2 means. OK, I'll explain that. Now, you're now saying you're also type 1. Why? Because type 1s need to inject what? OK? Here's the crazy thing. Do, do type 2s need to inject insulin? OK, so when a type 2 diabetic now needs sorry, to inject insulin, they're saying that you have type 1 diabetes. That is not true. What you have is what's called type 3 diabetes. I know, right? What is that? Raise your hand if you're like, type 3? Seriously? There's a third type? Raise your hand. Who, who does not know what type 3 diabetes is? Oh my god, we got to talk. That's what happens when this happens. And when that is not fixed, when type 3 is not fixed, you know what it becomes? Good lord, this is a brand new marker, isn't it? When type 3 is not fixed, it becomes type 4. Does anybody know what type 4 diabetes is? No. Oh, it's called Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> Alzheimer's. Yeah. Will your brain rot if you don't get sugar in your brain? Yes or no? Yes, your brain will rot if it doesn't get sugar for fuel. What is the problem with a type 2 diabetic? Are there receptors for insulin working? No. So where is the sugar? In the cell or in the blood? OK, so what if that was a brain cell? Oh, what if it's a brain cell? 
if the brain becomes insulin resistant, they're saying that is Alzheimer's. Is Alzheimer's climbing like crazy today? Yeah. What are they claiming the cause of Alzheimer's is? We don't know. It's genetic. No, it's not. It's uncontrolled diabetes. So I need to help you guys understand this. Technically, here's, here's why I love talking about diabetes, but I also hate it. All of you, if I had the ability right now to ping all of your sugars, would be pre-diabetic. Did you know that? All of you right now would be pre-diabetic. Now, she won't because we've been working really hard at it. She'll come back and be normal. Okay, so what you need to understand is that you have to make this admission of understanding. You are all pre-diseased. Do you guys have pre-cancer right now? Yes, I do, Dr. Ernst. But why don't you want to say that? Tell me, truth. Let's get into the psychology of your mind. Why would you have a hard time admitting I have a precondition? Somebody tell me. We don't want to admit it. We're kind of afraid. Why are we afraid, though? So there's that. But really, truly, why would you be afraid to say you have a condition? Because you're admitting to it? Yes, in the back. Because now you have to do something about it. Boom! So many of us are like, well, I don't want to claim it because I don't want to have to now deal with it. If I say I have prediabetes and I'm eating crap, I'm admitting that I don't care about myself. I don't want to do that. I don't want to show that, so I just won't say I have prediabetes. I'll say, oh, you know what? Those bagels in the morning don't do anything to me. I feel fabulous. And you're not looking at your numbers. Look, I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers, and I know some of you want to leave right now. I'm totally okay with that. You have to understand you're in control. I'm the kind of person, my personality would be like, oh, yeah, man, I'm pre-death, and I want to stop that. I want to live to be 120. I want to live to be 140. I want to set the Guinness Book of World Records for the oldest living person on this planet. That's me. I want that, and I'm going after it. Now, some of you are like, I don't want to be 120. Why? Because you think 120 looks like what? old and decrepit and decayed and taking medications in a wheelchair with oxygen going like this. <laughs> no, I see 120 as running on the beach, ripped abs, six sets of great grandkids. You guys understand? Change your thoughts. You get, if you believe that, you're going to get it. If you think it's genetic, you're going to get it. If you think you are too old to get well, you won't heal. Guys, I hope you see this. First step to becoming your own doctor. Who listened to my radio show for that? First step to becoming your own doctor. Did anybody hear that show? Oh, my God. Go to, pod, go to the podcast, iTunes, iTunes, then type in Ask Dr. Ernst for Podcast. Go back like four weeks ago. I, I did a show on how to become your own doctor. Three steps. Unlearn what you have learned. Step number one, unlearn. Step number two, relearn truth. Step number three, act on truth. It's that easy. I know my handwriting is terrible. You guys understand? Forget what you know. Implant a new belief system. Confirm that there's truth to it. And then act. What happens if you stop here? Does anything change? See, that's why nobody wants to go, you know what? I might have prediabetes. You see it? Oh, I hope you see it. So I'm going to help you today to unlearn. I'm going to show you what's wrong with our current system of health care. Are we all okay with this? Yeah. And then two, I'm going to implant a truth that I was given from him on how to help your bodies to heal. We've seen 43,700 something patients in 12 years. Is that a lot of people? Oh, yeah. We have a 95 to 98% success rate with people getting off meds and reversing conditions. Diabetes is just one of many. I've seen cancer patients literally become non-cancerous. CT scans and x-rays go in. There's nothing there. You know what their oncologists say? It's a miracle. You've been cured. No, a miracle is when something that's not supposed to happen happens. It would be a miracle if I let go of this and it floats here. Would you guys agree? But when it falls to the floor, I wouldn't go, it's a miracle. It fell to the floor. Now watch, when your body heals by itself, that is not a miracle. That is what is supposed to be happening all the time. Should I say that again? Yeah, yeah. It is not a miracle when your body heals itself. It is what is supposed to be happening all the time. Why aren't you healing yourself? You're blocked at those three core interferences that she talked about. Guys, there's a lot of spiritual side behind the number three. It's the trilogy. 
It's the effect of the tripod. It's the most stable. Three is a huge, significant number. There's three things that are interfering you from having your health. It's what's causing your diabetes. It's what's making your high blood pressure. It's what's causing you to have pain. It's what's making your cholesterol elevated. You get rid of those three interferences, and your body will heal by itself. No medications required. Think about it. If you break your leg, how many pills do you have to take to let the bone grow back together? Why is that? Body heals by itself. So why do we think when uh, blood pressure is elevated that we can't let the body heal by itself? Why do we think it must require a med to make it change? Because that's what you've been programmed to believe. And who does the programming? Be careful. Big Pharma does first. The government's second through commercials and, you know, like recently, right, the whole measles junk that's going on. And then a president who is so anti-vaccination now standing up and saying, yes, you must vaccinate. Guys, this is like happening right now. Okay, he got bought off. Our president got bought off by the pharmacy, and he said, they're like, you have to say this statement. American must be vaccinated against measles. He just did it yesterday. Did you guys see this? Who saw it? You're not even watching, right? Now, look, who saw the news this week that uh, Mr. Lawrence Dowd, head of, uh, uh, shoot, I lost the name. Starts with an R. Rochester Pharma. You guys hear about this? <gasps> what happened to him? He was arrested this week for doing what? Being the cause of the Oxycontin epidemic in the United States. What did he do? His company came up with the drug, Oxy, and they said, how can we get people to take this? Watch. You know what he said? Oh, we have a brilliant idea. Not an MD. Let's give it to the drug dealers. Literally, street dealers. Let's give our product to the street dealers. Let's let the street dealers give it to the people that are in pain. Now watch. When you go to a drug dealer, you've got to be careful, right? You've got to buy it, like cash, you know, side street, that kind of thing, and it's illegal, and you can get arrested, etc. So they go, so when the person says, I want more, this is a business plan, the drug dealer should say, hey, guess what? It's now a prescription. Go to your MD your medical dealer, and you can get it legal. So what they found out is the more we send here, the more we, we prescribe here, the more we make here. And he literally had it all mapped out in documentation, and that's what he got arrested for. They're like, uh, you, you, sir, caused the epidemic. Come with me. Guys, you think they have your best interest in mind? No, all they care about is money. Is that not demonic and sick? Yes. But you know what people say? My doctor has my best interest in heart. I'm in pain. They gave me fentanyl. They make fentanyl, by the way, and they make oxy. He gave me a fentanyl patch. Oh, I feel so much better. Thank you, doctor. No, it's a drug dealer. Drug dealer. Just a legal one. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm on a rant. I got to stop. We got to talk about diabetes. Okay. <laughs> but it's the same thing, isn't it? You need this insulin. It's brand new. Oh, wait, this one's brand new. It's going to work better than your old one. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. See, they're on drugs too, you go. You know that? They take drugs just like a drug dealer takes his drug because he wants you to think it works, right? Okay, so if you're here to get well, I need you to understand the concept of the fire inside. Write this down, the fire inside. Do you have a fire going on inside your body? Yes, yes you do. It is called your metabolic rate. Is this Greek if I say this to you guys? Metabolic rate. You have a fire going on inside of you. Some of you are hotter than others. Your fire is burning brighter than others. You guys understand this? Okay. Some of you are like this. Oh, I'm so tired. I need to get more energy. Is that a fire that's burning bright or about to burn out? About to burn out. Some of you are like this. I take 11 meds and I have all these problems. Is that a fire burning bright or a fire burning out? Burning out. Okay. So what feeds this fire? How does this fire stay burning? What do we have to do to make this fire work? What does a fire need to, to burn? What is the fuel in this analogy? Not, well, yes, but don't go there yet. What is the fuel? Wood. Would you agree? You need wood. What else do you need? Yep. What else do you need? A spark to start it. Nerve system. You need a spark. You need power. You can see this? Nutrients. Food and you need sugar. Do you need sugar in your body? Yes. If your blood sugar was zero, you would be, okay? Now, what happens when the fire starts to burn down 
but you keep adding wood to the fire. So the coals are kind of simmering, the flame is less, and you just keep dropping you know, blocks and blocks of wood on there. What's going to happen eventually? You're going to smoke it out. So do you guys see why it's so important, super important? You have got to stop adding sugar to your body if you're diabetic. You have to stop adding sugar to your body if you're a diabetic. You know what a lot of diabetics say? Well, that's my doctor said I can eat whatever I want as long as I take my pill. No, no, okay? If I keep adding wood to the fire, 24 logs here would be the equivalent of me eating 24 units of sugar, for example, in the analogy. If I keep piling it on there, what's going to happen? The fire will burn out. But see, you keep eating and eating and eating and eating, and so your pile piles up. What would be detected on a blood test in this instance? Sugars would be what? High. Now, watch. If sugar is high, what else is high? Yes, but what, what is the hormone that reacts to sugar to try to bring it down? Insulin. So is insulin high when sugar's high? Yes. And see, this is the conundrum, and medicine can't explain this. Why do you have a ton of insulin, but you have high sugar? Notice they never test insulin, do they? Why? Because a type 2 diabetic will have high insulin. And if you ask even the slightest of a brilliant question to your MD, they're going to go, this person knows too much. They've got to get out of my office. Doctor, how is it that my insulin is high when my sugars are high? Because insulin makes sugar go down. So why, why isn't my insulin low? Think about it. If my insulin is high, my sugar should be low. Why is my insulin high and my sugar high? They're going to go, I have no idea. Get out of my office right now. I have no idea. Take more. Take more drugs. Take more drugs. They do not know anything about the cause of their condition at a physician's internist level. Now, the research says they know a ton, but they're not applying their research, okay? So, again, if it keeps piling up and it keeps you guys like, you're like, well, I can't throw the wood on the fire. The fire's not burning, so just pile up, pile up. What will it turn into? What does all the sugar turn into? Fat. Okay, it stores. And you guys go, but I really, I want to lose weight. I so want to lose all this weight. And I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to eat better. No, I'm going to the fire on. You guys understand? Flan fan the flames. What I'm going to teach you today is how to spark the fire that you have burning, but it's, it's like just out a little bit. You guys understand? Now watch. If the fire was ferocious and I throw wood on it, what happens? You burn the wood. You guys see it? How did I make her sugars come down that fast in 90 days? We just fan the flames. And I have to teach you what the flames are in the body. Are we all okay? Did I go over anybody's head today? I like to use stories and analogies because you'll remember. You'll, be, you'll come to my office and go, hey, Dr. Ernst, I got a, little, I got a lot of wood stored in my shed. I want to get rid of the wood. And I'm like, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. I got a lot of wood. Like, there's so much wood right here. Okay? You guys will remember analogies. You won't remember the science. If I gave you the scientific words, you'll go, I don't even know what you're, you're saying. So I'm going to try to use a lot of analogies, okay? What we're going to do today is this. We're going to go four main points. Tell me if you want to know the real cause of diabetes. Okay, so I, now I'm going to show you the real, actual cause of diabetes. Tell me if you'd like to know what kind of tests you should run to find those things. Yes, yes right? Will medicine test for the cause of diabetes? They test for the symptoms of diabetes. What is the symptom of diabetes? High blood sugar. And fatigue and tiredness and weight gain and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and all that stuff. But then they'll go, oh, we have pills for those too, you know. We have a high blood pressure pill. We have a tired pill. We have a, a cholesterol pill. Like, we can give you all the pills you want. You hear it? We'll give you all the drugs you want because I'm a dealer. I deal drugs. I'm a medical dealer. You guys get it? Okay, now watch. I'm going to show you why the meds won't work, and hopefully you understand this. No drug made by man will ever fix the body. It will never do it. If anything, pharmakia is in the Bible about being witchcraft and sorcery. So when you swallow a pill, Christians, you are saying, I believe in witchcraft and sorcery, according to me. Be careful. What is the medical symbol for medicine? How many snakes? Why is there two and not one? Does anybody know? The snake is a representation in the Bible of? Be careful. Satan. Why are there two? Not just one snake. Why are there two snakes? Does nobody know? It's because in Greek mythology, they said that Satan can appear like God, 
So let's create two snakes, the God snake and the Satan snake. And then let's put the angelic wings because Satan was an angel. And let's call that medicine. Be really careful. Be really careful letting your MD take care of your health. Be really, really careful. Okay? Now, let's go deeper. Uh, I'm going to show you the one thing. Guys, there's only one thing you need to do. If you do this one thing, you'll reverse your diabetes. Who would like to know the one thing? About half of you. The rest of you will get to the one thing, right? It's only one thing, okay? I would take a picture if you want to. There's a lot of words. I'm not going to go through all of this, but the idea is you guys know that blood glucose, when we say blood glucose, means we're measuring the amount of sugar in your blood, yes? If you have high blood glucose, we say you have high blood sugar. It's interchangeable. Sometimes I will abbreviate this as BS, not what you're thinking, but blood sugar. Okay, so BS, blood sugar. A diabetic has a problem with having what? Too much blood sugar. How do we test blood sugar? And how can you guys do this? Now, you know what happens? I had this radio listener call in, and they're like, hey, listen, you know, like, it's really cool. I like what you're saying, but, like, I'm really healthy. Why should I check my sugars? Think about it, right? Like, if I asked you all to go home today, stop by Target, and buy a $20 monitor and check your sugars, what will some of you tell me? Be honest. I don't need to do that. Why not? Run with it. Why don't you need to do it? How do you know that? The doctor didn't find it, and I feel fine. And I, I don't have diabetes. How do you know you don't? I haven't been diagnosed with it. Well, you need to diagnose yourself. Don't let them diagnose you. You should diagnose yourself. Do you guys understand this? By the way, diagnosis, what does it stand for? Die means what? Two. Agnostic means what? No belief, right? Who are the two people that have no belief? You and the MD. You have no belief in what's causing your problem. They have no belief in what's causing your problem. When two people do not agree that there is no, or when two people agree there's no known cause, they'll say, here's your diagnosis. I don't know what's causing your problem. You don't know what's causing your problem. Here's your diagnosis. You have diabetes. You guys get it? It is a label that means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. If you have diabetes, I'm going to tell you you don't have diabetes. You have the underlying root cause that nobody's talked to you about. And if you fix that, your diabetes will go away because it's just a label. You can peel the label off your forehead and say, goodbye. Does that make sense? So how do we find out if we are diabetic or trending? How hard is it to take a finger stick, put the meter there, and have it go three, two, one, ping, and see the number? How hard is that? Okay, But some of you have never even done it yet, right? Well, shame on you. You should be doing it every week, every week. If you care about your health and your body, do it every week. Ready? Functional normal, meaning what is really good is you should have a fasting sugar, meaning you did, you ate dinner last night, you went to sleep, you woke up in the morning, and you should be 65 to 89. 65 to 89 is normal. I guarantee you, 90% of you will fail this test if you do it tomorrow. You will fail. Would you guys agree? There's a lot of people who are walking around in this blood sugar range in the morning and don't realize that that's pre-disease. If you're over one, you are technically by definition diabetic. Did you know that? If you wake up in the morning, you prick your finger and it's 125 and you haven't eaten anything since dinner, diabetic. Now we go deeper, right? What if we want to see if you're really having a problem? Write this down. Eat something and then wait for how many hours? Two and then take your sugars. Eat some food. Have your lunch. Set a two hour alarm from the moment you swallow the last bite and check your sugars. And I guarantee you, all of you will fail this. If you're between 140 and 180, you're pre-diabetic. If you're less than 140, everything's working fine two hours later. What's the problem and why most of us will fail the test? We ate something in those two hours. You know, most people are like, two hours? Oh my god, I have to go two hours without eating? Oh my God, like I'm not going to make it. You know how many people said, I can't come today because it's from 11 to 1? They're like, are you serving lunch? Not making it up. Are you serving lunch during your seminar? No, it's only a couple hours. You can do this. 
I haven't eaten since 7 o'clock last night. And I'm not going to eat until 7 o'clock tonight. Now watch. Next layer of understanding is insulin is a hormone that makes sugar go into the cell when the insulin receptors are working. When you get your sugar tested, medicine is going to say less than 25. I'm going to say it needs to be around 5. 5. So you could go to your doctor, have your insulin tested, have it come back at 21, and what will they say? Oh, you're good. But that's really bad, just so you know. Insulin should be at 5. 5. 5. 5 is also a biblical number. What does it stand for? 5. Grace. It's easy to remember when it's a biblical number. Grace. Okay. A1C. A lot of you still don't know what it means. You'll say something like me. I had a, the last time I did a diabetic seminar, somebody came up and was like, hey, Dr. Nurse, my A1C is 11.6. And I was like, 11.6? And they're like, yeah, it's been that way for years. And I'm like, years? And they're like, why are you freaking out? And I'm like, it means 11.6% of your blood can't carry oxygen. Did you know that? A1C stands for the percentage of blood that is coated with sugar so much that oxygen cannot get onto the red blood cell. What happens when you don't get oxygen to your fire? Burns out. The higher the A1C, the worse your fire is because you're not getting oxygen to your body. You can have a lethal A1C, just so you know. If they ping your blood and it's at 19, well, they're doing it post-mortem. Now watch. A lot of us are 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and we're like, well, I'm taking meds. It's managed. Big, big, big problem. What is an insulin receptor? It is it's really important you understand this. Each cell in your body has what are called receptors. They look like antennas, a receptor for hormones. Do you have an insulin receptor? Yes. Do you have a thyroid hormone receptor? Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, ghrelin, leptin, CCK. Every hormone in your body lands on a receptor. Let me ask you a question. What happens if the receptor has something inside of it and the hormone tries to land on it? What would happen? Nothing. That is the true real cause of type 2 diabetes. You have something inside the receptor. That's why insulin is high. Your body makes more insulin because it's like, I don't know, trying to knock the sucker loose. Need more. Need more. Need more. But your sugar still will go up because what? Sugar cannot go in the cell unless insulin gets inside of here. A gate is opened and sugar goes whew. Do you need sugar in your cells? Yes. It's what makes energy. Why are most type 2 diabetics like, I'm so tired. I'm so tired because their cells are starving for food. Why do they urinate so much? Because your body's like, uh, we got to get rid of the sugar somehow. Open the kidney. And you'll urinate like crazy. And you guys will say, I don't like that. I have to go to the bathroom all the time. I want to stop going to the bathroom. Stop eating sugar. Get the receptors working. Turn the fire on. Get the oxygen back into your body. I'll show you how to do it. Does that make sense? I hope this makes sense. Are we okay so far? All right, ready? These are the three types of diabetes according to your MD. Your drug dealer will say, these are the three things we can treat you for. They'll say, I can give you drugs for type 1, I can give you drugs for type 2, and I can give you drugs for type 3. Yes? What's the drug for type 1? Insulin. Now, here's the bad belief. They'll say, you're genetically dysfunction, and your pancreas doesn't make insulin, so you must inject insulin. Now, there's truth to this, but it's not that it's a genetic issue. It means that the cells inside of your pancreas, right? The pancreas makes insulin, yes? So the question should be, hey, pancreas, why aren't you making insulin? Do they ask that question? No. Now, do you guys know that it's because Your bones strong. Yeah. Dairy. Dairy Association, because they want to sell milk. Right. But who's the one who said that? Who told you that milk is good for your body? Doctor, Truly. Doctor. Your doctor did, didn't they? Mm -hmm. 
Mm, careful, don't listen to your medical doctor's advice. Don't listen to them. Type 1 diabetes, they will say it's caused by, we don't know, it's genetic, we don't know. It's funny though, isn't it? When do most kids get type 2 diabetes? At what age? Like them when they're adults, or seven, eight, nine. So how could a genetic child who's two, three, four not have type 1 diabetes, and then all of a sudden, boom, their genes go bad on them? Because it's all made up. It's all made up. What happens is, it's when their pancreas goes, oh, I can't handle all the viruses in the milk anymore. And it shuts off. What happens if I say don't drink milk ever again? First thought, quick, first thought. Not Why? Because it's over. Well, go, 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 go. first thought. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink don't milk. Don't drink milk. Okay, great. See, we're learning now. Somebody tell me, what's the fear of not drinking milk? I'm gonna get weak bones. Where are you getting the calcium from? From the milk? No, they added that, it's synthetic. Where does the cow get the calcium from in its milk? Grass. So what should you do to eat to get your calcium levels up? Eat grass. more grass. 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 <laughs> what are the grasses we can eat? What are the grasses we can eat? Wheat grass. Wheat grass. Broccoli. Now I say go. How many? How is the best to do the wheat grass shot? Wheat grass. How, how many of you have juiced wheat grass and had a drink of it? Boom. Thank you. Boom. Boom. Only three of you. It's grass that human beings can eat. You juice it. You drink it. Boom. Calcium levels go through the roof. Not from milk. From grass. Second, type 2 diabetes. What do they say causes that? We still don't know. We still don't know. Your insulin receptors are resistant. Doc, why are they resistant? I have no idea. But what do we have for you? We have insulin for this. What do we have for this? Oh, I got a lot, don't we? Metformin, lactose, glucophage, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now, recently, a medical doctor said, oh my gosh, there's actually a third type. It's when your brain becomes resistant. When your brain doesn't get sugar, your brain rots and it dies. It's called Alzheimer's. She coined the phrase type 3 diabetes in 2008. There's a lot of research saying that's true. Now, here's what we, the holistic alternative health field, say are the three types of diabetes. Please take a photo. Three types of diabetes. Neurogenic, toxicogenic, microbiogenic. What does the word genic stand for? When I say the word genic, what am I meaning? To create, right? Genesis, the creation of the earth, genic. Nerve created, you see it? Nerve created, toxic created, microbiome, gut created. These are the three types of diabetes. If you're here today and you want to get rid of your diabetes, you need to figure out which one or all do you have. Okay, stop saying I'm a type 2 diabetic. There's no such thing as type 2 diabetes. It's a label that was made up to make a drug be sold. You understand this? There is no such thing as diabetes. What you have is the symptomatic expression of one of these three. Make sense? So if you want to get rid of it, you have to find out which of these do you have. Stop asking your doctor to run your A1C. A1C is a good measurement, but what does it do? Does it tell you how to fix it? No, no it just tells you you still have a problem. Well, I was doing really good. I exercised you know, like three days a week for 10 minutes, because that's all I could do. And I, I followed the, the keto diet, it's still bad. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, when diet and exercise don't work, yep. we have drugs for that, right. right? We have drugs for that. So let's go through these, is that okay? <coughs> All I wanna do today is teach you what these three are, how you test for them, and how you fix them. Is that fair? Yeah. Great, okay. Would you like to invest in this stock? Let's say in 1958, you bought this stock uh, for a dollar. Uh, would this be a great stock to invest in? Yeah. Okay, that is the rate of diabetes diagnosis in the United States since 1958. Question, question. The natural trend, if you guys know anything about statistics, would have been to go like this, wouldn't it? So what the heck happened right here? What happened in 1997? Can somebody tell me? Raise your hand if you know what it is. Yes. Of wheat. We genetically modified wheat in 1997 and a company called Monsanto said, well, the modification is because we want the wheat to only grow in the presence of Roundup. So they made the wheat unable to grow unless it was sprayed with their product. Who controls the seeds? Monsanto. Who controls the pesticide to make the seeds grow? They are a pharmaceutical company, just so you know. They are owned by Bayer. Did you guys know this? Bayer owns Monsanto. A pharmaceutical company owns the largest food distributor in the world. Do you think there's a reason that they do this? 
Yeah, because they're like, hey, this trend is not going well enough. We need to make more money. How can, oh, guess what? We can create this. 1997, genetic modification of wheat hit the board. Now watch, when I say to you, okay, show of hands, who has high sugars and wants them to go down? Just real quick, okay? From today forward, don't ever, ever, ever put wheat in your mouth. What do you, what's first thought? I love it. You know why? You know why? Because when they modified it, they put a special enzyme in there to kick your receptor in your brain just like cocaine does. Mm -hmm. Wheat will stimulate your brain just like cocaine. So people get addicted to grains. That was part of the genetic modification because they went, well, how am I going to get people to eat more of this stuff? If we grow a lot of it, how am I going to get them to eat it? One, the government said, go from six servings to eight or ten every day. We're going to push whole grains like crazy. We're going to say they're healthy. We're going to say you need whole grain everything. We're going to say you guys need to eat wheat. If you don't, you're going to run out of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients because grains carry them. No, they don't. There's no minerals and vitamins, nutrients, and grains, just so you know. They can strip of all of them. And they said, if we make it so that it hits their pleasure senses, when they eat that, think about it, when you eat that toasty brown everything bagel with dairy, cream cheese, Oh, it's doing it to all of you, isn't it? It's hitting your pleasure senses. You know why? It was created to do that. Because we can make you sick. You've got to stop dairy, and you have to stop wheat. You have to stop dairy and stop wheat. Now, if we lived in another country, would we have to do that? No, because America has poisoned our food. Okay, so why is it going like this, Monsanto? Thank you, Monsanto. And thank you, Big Pharma, right? Because there's millions of drugs. Because why? They said, I want more disease so we can make more drugs so we can make more money. See it? This is complete and utter, I'll call it demonic nature, in my opinion. Okay, now, how do we get out of this? Well, we stop spending money on that stuff. Think about it. If you just stop buying your prescriptions, all of the whole system would fall apart. Would you agree? If I could get 90% of the United States to go, you know what, I'm not refilling my drugs, I'm not, I refuse, it would crumble in about a week. Do you understand that? But the problem is, oh, we just keep refilling and refilling and refilling and refilling. Why? The blind will lead the blind very well. There's a book, I don't, you can read it if you want, it's phenomenal. It's a little deep, but it's by a, a, a PhD, his name is Bruce Lipton. Has anybody heard of Bruce, Bruce Lipton before? Show of hands, Bruce Lipton, Bruce Lipton. Good for you, one, okay? Read this book, it's phenomenal. What it says is this, if you believe something to be true, what will happen? You will see that truth everywhere, and it will reinforce your belief to say that is the truth. Now watch, if you believe type two diabetes is genetic, you will seek out and find people who agree with you to reinforce your belief. Oh, you think it's genetic? So do I. I'll hang out with you. Wait, what? It's not genetic? Well, I don't like that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't want to be associated with you. Ah, oh, the power of our beliefs. We seek out people who believe what we want to believe. Is that true? Yeah, now watch this. If you believe you're going to get cancer, what will you get? Cancer. If you believe you're not worthy, what are you? Unworthy. You will be unworthy. Ah, oh, it's demonic, isn't it? It's literally the twisting of the tongue of the brain inside of our head, right? So what Bruce Lipton said was this. In the book, he goes, hey, listen, all these people who have disease are wanting the disease. This is deep. If you have diabetes, it's because you want it. Why? It entitles you to have things like sympathy from other people. Oh, you're a diabetic? Oh, I'm so sorry. I know a lot of diabetics. It's rough, isn't it? You see, you want that. Now, you might say to me, oh, I do not at a subconscious level, you do. Because if you really didn't want it, what would you have done? You would have gotten rid of it. But don't tell me that you really want to get rid of it because you should be getting rid of it already. You just need to know how. Would you agree? Yes. Great. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to change your beliefs. Is everybody ready with this? Yes. Some of you still believe that it is a lifelong illness that requires medications and you need to get your blood tested by your medical doctor. Some of you, maybe you guys are losing this belief. But I guarantee you, 99.9% of the world believes if you're a diabetic, you gotta take your meds, you gotta go to your doctor, and you gotta get that A1C tested to make sure your meds are working, right? Isn't it funny that they say a type two controlled diabetic, they say you're controlling your disease if you keep your A1C where? In the sixes. Keep it in the sixes, we know the meds are working, everything's good, but what is six? Way too high, way too high. Okay, second, if you remove the cause of what creates it, your body will get rid of it. That's a different belief than this, isn't it? That's the belief I hold. 
So if you're looking for hope, we have a system that works because we're gonna show you what's causing your condition, and I'm gonna prove it to you so you can go, oh my God, I believe this now. I actually truly do believe it. Because the moment you switch your belief, what happens? Your body will start to heal. It's that easy. You have to unlearn what you already know and relearn. So just implant these truths and let me prove to you. Did you know the average type two diabetic spends $4,500 a year on testing, medications, doctor's visits, all of the above? Who would like to say $4,500 a year? Okay, yeah. And then you can invest that back into yourself and turn it into like 50, 100, etc. How many of you believe that, well, look, 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 as long as my meds keep my numbers normal, I'm good, anybody? Okay, a lot of people tell me this. They're like, Dr. Ernst, I don't need to come see you. Um, my meds are making my sugars in the normal ranges. And I'm like, really? You're under 89? They're like, no, I'm at 102. That's what my doctor said is normal. Oh man, I'm so sorry. But I believe it, so I'm not gonna come see you. You guys see how it works? They think they're okay. Did you know that even though, this is what the research says, even though you're taking meds and your numbers are normal, you're at risk for everything. 68% more likely to have a heart attack. 50% more likely to be blind because of being diabetic. 60% more likely of having your arms amputated later on in the future because you lost all the nerve supply and numbness tingling because the nerves are dead from all the sugars. 30% more likely to have retinopathy. Overall, how much? Somebody tell me, what's that number? <laughs> oh my God, did you know that the people who take medications live eight and a half years less than their counterparts who take none? That should make you say, oh, I'm gonna throw up all of them and I'm gonna throw them all away. Don't put them in the toilet though because what happens when you flush your meds? They get in your water and then you drink someone else's meds. And unfortunately, we're doing that today. Some of you are like, I don't take meds. Yes, you do. You drink Charlotte water. There's medications in our water. There's meds in our water. Believe, ready? The Diabetic Association has your best interest in mind when they come up with the diabetic diet, right? Who's heard of the diabetic diet? Okay, right? The American Diabetic Association will say, eat this way and you'll manage your disease. What do they say? Lots of grains, of course they do. They're being paid by Monsanto and Big Pharma. And they say, don't you dare eat fat, right? Low fat, high grains, moderate sugar, American diet. Yet there were studies showing that if you eat a high fat diet from pretty big universities, that you do what? Threefold decrease. Eat fat, you'll get rid of your diabetes. Eat grains, you'll create and sustain and cause more diabetes. Who do you want to believe? That whole grain oatmeal breakfast, yes, is making you sick. It is making you sick. This is the American Diabetic Association's diet. What do they see? What is this? If you had to sum this up into one word, what is this? That is sugar, okay? What are milk products? Sugar. sugar. Milk, sugar is called lactose. Lactose, right? Lactose, O-S-E is sugar. These are amylose, amylose, <laughs> lactose. Fats and butters are good to eat, but how much do they say you should eat? Not a lot. Fish and meats and things like that are good to eat, but how much do they say you should eat? Not a lot. Now they're like, load up on fruits first. No. And then vegetables. It should be vegetables, no fruit. Meats, fats, and butters only. That's a true get rid of diabetic diet. No grains, no dairy, no fruit, meat, fish, chicken, turkey, eggs, beef, fat, and vegetables only. Now, when I say that to you, what do you guys say to me? Yeah. Right? <laughs> Trust me. You're like, oh, well, what a, oh, that sounds terrible. It's actually what we're supposed to eat. We were not designed to eat the wheat of today. Wheat of yesteryear? Absolutely. Man, the Bible talks about the disciples going through and taking the wheat kernels and chewing on them directly. If I live in the biblical days, I could say, yes, you may eat wheat. But today I have to say, no, 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 no. You guys get it? But see, you still think whole grains are good. Trust me, I know you do. You'll buy the whole grain wheat toast bread instead of the Sarah Lee white because you think it's better. They're both demonic, both of them. They are creating disease inside of your body. Next, most people think that there's nothing wrong with taking a statin. Now, I know we're talking about diabetes and I know I'm switching gears to cholesterol, but watch this. Every single person that takes a statin drug has diabetes. Did you know that? Who's on a statin right now that would be willing to raise their hand? You have diabetes, I guarantee you do. You have it too, I guarantee you do. It's 100% correlation. If you have diabetes, I go like this. What's the name of the statin you're taking? They're always like, oh, that's send a statin, but it's for my cholesterol, it has nothing to do with my diabetes. Oh, you completely have lost the big picture. There was a study done showing how many people? That's a lot, would you agree? Yeah, 
91,140 people were tested and they said um, if you're on a statin, it increases your development of type 2 diabetes because you're taking a statin. Statins raise insulin. What would be the problem with raising insulin? So shouldn't high insulin mean low sugar? No. So what happens when there's tons of insulin flowing around your body? What happens? Become insulin. You become resistant to it. It's like that screaming child mentality. You guys ever heard of this? You got a room of screaming children. They're screaming, screaming, screaming. And after an hour, you're like, I don't even hear them anymore. It's the smell mentality. Somebody walks into this room with a huge cologne on. All of you are going to go, whoa, I smell it. And then all of a sudden, after like 10 minutes, you don't have to smell it anymore. You guys understand? You become resistant to stuff that's always around you. Okay? So the more insulin you have, the more insulin resistance you have, statins make insulin go up. Did you know that? Did you know that the more insulin you have, the faster you age? So statins make you age faster. Oh, how many of you would love to just stop your statin right now? You can, just stop taking it. Who's holding a gun to your head saying you must swallow this? Think about it, nobody, but why do we swallow them? We have the wrong belief. We believe they're helping us. You guys see it, you see the problem? The problem is we're believing the wrong thing. Worth taking a photo. This is the blood test that you guys should get to find out what's causing your type of diabetes. There's three types. Who remembers the three real types? Neurogenic, toxicogenic, microbiogenic. Oh my God, you guys are paying attention. I love it. Okay, watch. Does this person who came into my office after coming to my last diabetic event have diabetes? Do they have diabetes? You know what they told me? I had no idea. I had no idea. I came to your diabetic thing, but you were talking about cholesterol. Like, I'm wild. Old heart disease patient, I've had a stent, I've everything, I want to see if you can help me with my heart disease. And I went, I can, but you've got to understand you're diabetic. You know what he said to me? He goes, how do I don't feel this? Why can't I feel my high blood sugars? You guys tell me, why can't you feel sugars? Because your blood has no pain responses inside of it. There's no nerve endings inside your blood. You can't feel what your blood is. You can't feel your blood pressure either, can you? What's your blood pressure right now? No idea. So you must test, you must test, okay? C-reactive protein is the heart's stress response because of all the sugar flowing through. Is his C-reactive protein high? That's why he's got heart issues. You see it? It's not cholesterol problems. It's not genetics. It's an inflammatory heart. Homocysteine is inflammation of the whole body. Is his body inflamed? No. And his heart's inflamed. You're going to learn all about this guy today. Ferritin is the number one toxin that gets inside of the insulin cell receptor and says, you cannot work insulin. How much ferritin have you got? Oh my God, how much, how, what's the normal level? What's his? Oh, you know what he has? Toxicogenic diabetes. I just showed you. This is how we find out what kind you have. We have to look at your blood to find out if you're toxicogenic. We look at your urine to find out if you're microbiogenic. And we look at your spine to find out if you're neurogenic. Does that make sense? So this guy, you should be able to go and say, oh my gosh, you are toxicogenic diabetes. Now you leave here today and you call up your friend and go, oh my God, you might have toxicogenic diabetes. What do you think they're gonna say to you? Uh -huh. Huh, what the huh? You, are you an MD? Are you a drug dealer? Okay, look, this is how we look for microbiogenic. Ready? What is your microbiome? Somebody tell me. Your gut, and it's the bacteria in here. How many of you are like, huh, micro, what? Just out of showing hands, never heard of the word microbiome before. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Your gut has a specific relationship of bacteria inside of it that make you well. Your immune system is here. We can detect, for example, watch this. Do you have the ability to burn fat? No. You should be here. Gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal. What's after the bronze medal? No medal. There's none. <laughs> They don't care about the rest of those people. And the only difference is like a half of a nanosecond. You know that, right? Like the fifth metal and the bronze metal, they're like pretty good people. But they're like, oh, we don't care about you. So watch. You do not want any dots above that line here. How many dots are above the line? All of them except for two. So I went, okay, you cannot burn fat. We can fix that. You're burning carbs inappropriately. We can fix that. You have no energy in your body. You know what they said to me? Oh, yeah. Huh. Like I sleep like 14 hours and I'm still tired. Okay, and you're not methylating, which is a detox process. I'll teach you guys about that. And you have massive oxidation. See this guy right here? This is a super huge long word to say, right? Okay, if that's high, it tells me how many times faster you're aging. 
person is aging 1.2 faster. Is that good or bad? Yeah. That means every year they get one year older, they're 1.2 years older. Every year from birth. So by the time you're 40, you're actually 60. Can we make this marker go down? Yes. Have you ever seen people who like say, well, when I changed my diet and I started acupuncture and chiropractic, I, oh, I feel like I'm younger. Anybody? Yeah, you actually physically are getting younger inside. But if you don't know to test for it, you won't even know what's happening. So we have to test instead of guessing. What's the first thing that you guys are starting to think of right now when I'm starting to show tests? Being transparent and honest with me. I'm showing you tests. I'm recommending you get them. First off. Huh? Say it again? So I need to do them. But what's the second thought? It's always this, isn't it? How much do these tests cost? Now, most of you will come up to me and go like this. I really want this test. Hey, I have Blue Cross. Will they, will they cover this? Wouldn't yeah. you think that's the question? It's the question everybody says. Well, I have insurance, Dr. Ernst. Can they, can they pay for these? No. Why? They look for cause. You want your medical doctor on a test? Go there. They'll do it. They look for symptoms. If you want to find cause, you're going to have to pay for them. They're gonna say that's an experimental test, it's non-covered. I'll tell you how much it is, just so you know, this test right here is $1,300. $1,300, this test right here is $899. Why? These markers are abnormal. That alone costs $150 to look for, according to Blue Cross, MedCost, UHC, Edna, et cetera. Now, real quick, I wanna talk about money real fast. You guys realize that as a physician, if I go to LabCorp and say, hey, run this, how much do they charge me? I'm a doctor, how much do they charge me? No, no. You know what they say? Hey doc, you're a physician. We'll give you professional courtesy. Just pay what we have to pay to run it. This test costs $2.99 for me. This test costs $3.99 for me. $3.99 instead of $1,300. So what I could do, if you want, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this later. If you want, would you be willing to let me buy your tests so I can get it at my price? Like, I will say this, you want these two tests run? Okay, I'll take out my credit card and, and I'll buy them for you. But what am I gonna ask them to do in return? Pay them back, please, just so my credit card will be at a balance of zero. And then I'll tell you everything about it. I'll give you a visit to go over the reports and findings. I'll tell you one thing you should do. You go, please do that. And then I'll follow up with you the following week. And I'm not gonna charge you anything for any of that. And you might say, why would you do that? Because nobody else is gonna help you get these tests. When God told me to do it, hey, if I bless you, please bless others. I will pay for your tests. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you about that in a second. Okay, now watch. This is what they usually say, right? Like, I had somebody do this one at my last event. They took a photo of both of these. They went to their doctor and said, hey, can you run these? Because if the doctor runs them, maybe the insurance is covered, right? Isn't that the thought? Like, oh, it's this outfit. I want this outfit. I'll just go get this done. And the doctor went like this. Huh? Like, what? Uh, nope. We don't recommend it, and your insurance doesn't cover it, but we have tests that we could do for you. Why don't we do ours? Has anybody ever asked their doctor to run tests? And they say, no. Why do they say no? Because it, it was vitamin D. Right. Something very basic. Something simple. Yeah, and you can have way too much of that. Isn't that ridiculous? You, why won't they test vitamin D? Do you guys know? Yeah. Why don't they test vitamin D? There's no cure. There is no cure to fix it. They just, because there's so many supplements out there, they don't want you to take supplements. So what did they do? They made a prescriptive vitamin D. But it's D2, not D3 because they can't prescribe what's already available over the counter. Do you guys know this? D3 is available over the counter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. So they cannot, they cannot have a prescription for what's available over the counter. So they said, well, we'll give you D2, and we'll call it D3. Mm -hmm. We'll say you're taking D3, but you're not. You're taking synthetic D2, which you just defecate and urinate out, which is why most people say, well, I took what the doctor said, my numbers didn't budge an inch, because it's not D3. Why don't they also test D3? D3 is a healing marker. <laughs> If D3 is high, you're healthy. If it's low, you're sick. And if you said, Doc, get my number up, they're going to go, uh, well, you know our pill doesn't work. Uh, if you take it and you ask me to rerun it, uh, I'm going to have to prove to you that it doesn't work. And then what do I do? Oh, guess what? I'm going to test it. Not making it up. Don't test it. Can you guys listen to him for a second? Are you, make, are you okay if I push play? Yeah. He couldn't be here today, but he says, oh, my God, Dr. Ernst, I want to tell you something. Look. He was told that they can't discover why he has it because no one in his family has diabetes. And 
he does. Violates everything medicine believes in, doesn't it? Listen to him, please. Ready? Hello, my name is Don Weaver. I'm 73 years old. In 2003, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Neither side of my family, mother or father, had any history of diabetes. I'm the first. However, it was the increasing cost of the diabetes medications to just manage the situation that led me to seek an alternative and in turn led me to Dr. Ernst and his program. I started uh, his program around the 1st of February. This year. Uh, let me give you this some year. idea of my stats uh, then and now. Uh, I visited my family physician in late January and at that time my A1C was 10.1. I had a recent visit with him toward the end of March and my February, A1C March. was February, down to March. 7.3. At the time I February. started the program I weighed in at about 284 pounds. I'm now down to 239 pounds and hope to continue uh, losing that weight. Also since starting the program I have uh, been off of all of my diabetes medications along with the ancillary drugs that accompany this condition such as the statins and the blood pressure medicine. I'm really pleased with my progress to date in the program and look forward to seeing uh, continued positive results from following Dr. Ernst's protocol. I can't say enough good things about Dr. Ernst. Uh, he knows his stuff <laughs> and it's working for me. Uh, also, the staff at his office is just outstanding. They're very, very helpful, uh, very cordial, and it's uh, always a pleasure to go in there to see them. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, life's a series of trade-offs. And I could say in this situation that uh, exchanging the uh, diet and the lifestyle that I led before joining Dr. Ernst, uh, as opposed to the one that I'm following now, is certainly a, a good trade-off. Yeah, and again, that I don't have to be taking all these meds just to manage the situation, not to cure it, but to manage it. Uh, I don't miss at all being or sticking myself every day with one form of insulin pen or another. Uh, and the pharma keeps coming out with a different one um, about every month. In any event, uh, very, very pleased with the program today. And again, I look forward to seeing continued positive results. Would you agree to hear what he said? He changed his beliefs. He traded an old thought and a lifestyle for a new thought. And guys, this is the way my patients talk. They're like, he came in last week and he goes, Dr. Harris, I just want to tell you something. Uh, yeah, have you ever heard the, the phrase, you know, like uh, you trade one thing for another and it's never going to be a trade off in the end? And I was like, actually, I haven't. And he's like, oh, well, that's because you're young. And I'm like, but you said it, guys. And he's like, you're really young. And I was like, well, thank you for the compliment. I mean, I've been doing this long enough. I just never heard this phrase. And he goes, well, you should look into it. And he goes, some psychology today, so I start researching it. It's brilliant. It's the idea again, like what Bruce Lipton said, trade one way of doing something for another way of doing something, and if it works, stick with it. If it doesn't, keep trading until you find it. Keep trading. The problem is, so many of us just believe <coughs> there's like lemmings. We just go like this until we fall off the cliff. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is to show you how do you find out if you have each of these three. We've already talked about this one, right? How do we find this guy? How do we find if you have toxicogenic? You must get a blood test, and the blood test has to include what? Ferritin. Like, please write that word down. Ferritin. Ferritin. Ferritin is a toxic form of iron that's flowing around through your bloods, causing your diabetes. What does ferritin do? Ferritin gets inside that insulin receptor. So remember again, you have a cell which is the fire, you guys understand the analogy? The fire is your cell. Cells need oxygen, yes. They need water, they need food, they need nerve supply, and they also need sugar. So your cells were built with a receptor like an antenna called an insulin receptor. So again, if ferritin, I'll just do F, if ferritin gets inside of it, do you see how that would make you insulin resistant? So, all you have to do is find out how much ferritin do you have and then you gotta get rid of it. Now, how do we get metals out of the body? Does anybody know this? You have to chelate. Chelate means this, chelate, C-H-E, chelate, C-H-E-L-A-T-E. It means to take a substance orally or through IV, oral's way better, just, you know, 
orally that are like little tiny magnets. They flow around your body. Let's say this is the chelator. You swallow it and it goes like this. Oh, ferritin, it never lets go. And then it's water soluble. So what happens? You urinate the metal out. So what's one way we can look wow. to see if you're toxic? What's one way? We can look at your urine and see how many metals are coming out of you. But you must take a chelator to test that. Isn't that wild? Now you can do blood tests as well. So what we're gonna do is go, okay, neurogenic. Ready for this? Neurogenic diabetes. Tell me if you agree with this. Your pancreas is supposed to make insulin, yes? Now this is gonna answer a lot of the type one diabetes or like why do I have to now inject? I'm a type three diabetic. If your brain loses its energetic connection, your brain is wired to your body, yes? We're not wireless. We can't take our brain out and sit on the counter over there and still work like Bluetooth. We can't. You never will be able to do that, okay? Everything else in the world is wireless, yes? You have a wire that goes down your neck to your pancreas. It also goes to your heart, lungs, liver, spleen, pancreas, toenails, hair, everything goes everywhere, everywhere. So watch, what would happen, I'm just talking philosophy, if I went, cut, cut, what would happen? Brain to pancreas signal would go to zero. Would your pancreas make any insulin? No, okay, so you could be a non-diabetic. Watch, watch, non-diabetic. I can go in and go, Clip. and then now what is she? Diabetic. Would that mean we could cause diabetes? Yeah. So is there a cause of diabetes? Yeah. And it is neurogenic. You guys understand this? So the question is, do you have neurogenic diabetes? How would we know if it's cut? If you cut the nerve, how would we know? Well, you would be dead because it goes everywhere. Heart, lungs, liver, spleen, pancreas, skull, bladder. Do you understand? If it's severed, you're dead. So what you all have is a set amount of pressure or irritation. Guess where the vagus nerve comes from? Right there. Now, how many of you are like, yeah, you know what? Like, it's kind of swollen. Or like, you know, like, I just need it. Oh, there it goes. Anybody? Okay, it's your first cervical bone. Can I show it to you real quick? Okay, vagus nerve comes out right there. You guys see that space? Okay, here's your skull, meaning what's inside your skull? Not air, brain, brain, right? Brain is inside the skull. You guys see the mouth, the teeth, the sinuses, right? See the breathing path, the airway? So when you go, air goes in like this. See the gray thing right here? That's your esophagus. So when you swallow food, it goes down your neck, okay? Now watch. Vagus nerve is right here. You guys tell me, does that look pretty open to you? Is that open? Yeah. Okay. Your neck is supposed to have a 45 degree curve into it. Does this person have a 45 degree curve in their neck? Yes. It's supposed to be at 18 degrees in there. No, but it's really daggone close. Would you agree? It's a patient of mine who got their system fixed. Didn't look like this when I saw them. So this is what we want. Ready? We want that to be open. We want the neck to have a curve at 45. And we want the ear, see the ear? Be over the shoulder really all you need to know. Now, you guys tell me, I'm gonna give you all an honorary doctorate degree in reading x-rays. Everybody ready? I confer upon you the ability to read x-rays. Please tell me, please tell me, hold on there, you see, that's what we're looking for right here, ready? We want that. Please tell me, what's wrong with this? So first of all, is it open or closed? closed. Second of all, is the ear over the shoulder? No. no. Is there a curve to this person's neck? So they came to my diabetic seminar, and then afterwards they run up to me like, Rah! and they're like, oh my God, I wanna get tested. And I said, great, okay, you, you need to go over there, not here, and he goes, no, no, wait, I just have a question. I've been going to a chiropractor for years. I don't think I have the, the nerve thing because I've been getting adjusted for years. I'm pretty sure it's toxicogenic, I'm pretty sure. And yet when I ran his test, guess what? No toxic, it was nerve, you know what he said? I don't understand, I don't understand, I've been going to a chiropractor for years. Who's been to a chiropractor before? Remember when I said I'm not a chiropractor? What do chiropractors do? Don't they go like this? Hey, uh, where do you hurt? In your low back? Yeah. What do they do? And then don't they go like this? And then don't they go like this? Hey, do you feel better now? You know what? I do. Thank you. That is not chiropractic. That is not chiropractic. Chiropractic is the art of moving a bone from one spot to another spot to reverse nerve damage. Move one bone from one spot to another to reverse nerve damage. 
how would I know if that's going on? Can I ask you, hey, is your vagus nerve compressed? <laughs> what do we have to do? Let's take an x-ray. So glad did I take an x-ray in 2017 in May. Now watch this. Guys, the kind of chiropractic I do is not like what you're used to, okay? And some of you are patients, right? Like, you guys are like, whoa, like, what the heck are you guys doing? I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay? We do one adjustment, and then what do we do? We look, see if it moves. Okay? Do you think it's worth knowing if it's gonna work or not? Okay, A, because if I'm gonna ask you to invest some time and energy into your health, you're gonna wanna know, hey, like, is this really gonna work? Is it really gonna work? You know what it tells me? You don't believe that it's gonna work yet. So I'll help you with this. But watch, I did one adjustment. And then I didn't see it. Ready? One. May 1st to May 8th. One. What happened? Now, you see these little things right here? That's a two pound weight on his forehead. And I don't know if you can see it, but see how there's like, it looks kind of like something's pushing in right here? That is a foam roll with a five pound weight on his chest. What I did was, yes, the chiropractor, I released the joint. And then I put him on a plate that vibrates. I put weights here and here because what the weights do is they go and he vibrated for five minutes and then I took an x-ray. Why did I do that? To see if it will move. <coughs> did it move? Please tell me doctors, did it move? What percent did it move? What percent? 50 to 20, like 70, 80%, yes? You know what, you know what he told me? Oh. The heck did you do to me? Ooh, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Doc, I think you made me worse. <coughs> nope, that's all the toxins coming out of you. Your body just went like this. <gasps> oh my God, I can see everything, I can see everything. Get rid of it, get rid of all of it. Now, get rid of all of it. You guys understand, your body wants to heal you. Now, if in one day I reverse 30 years worth of damage, what do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> you're gonna throw up, you're gonna get nauseous, you're gonna get sick. And if you think that's unwell, it's the wrong belief. It's the wrong belief. What's unwell is that not having the reaction, what's well is this. Now, I'm forcing it, yes? So I can say to him, okay, I want you to wear these head weights for the rest of your life. I want you to put this chest weight on for the rest of your life. That's what medicine does, doesn't it? Yeah. So I say to him, now, well, let me show you how to fix this and how to train your neck, how to go there, so that maybe in like a couple months, you could come in without the weights on. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? So then I said, I'd like to take an x-ray on you again later without the weights. So is this later? That's one month later. Where is he? No weights. Where is he? Very close. Should be 45, right? So where was he? Where was he? He started off at 26. One adjustment got to 38. One month later at 34. That's not bad. And then a couple months later, back to 38, back to wide open, back to centered, fully healed. Why? Neurogenic cause gone. You guys see it? Neurogenic cause gone. Now, does it require repetitious therapy, things like that? You know what people say? Oh, you have do you have to do that and can't you just do it some other way? No, I wish you could. There's no other way. I have some people that are like, please don't adjust my neck. And I'm like, okay, please don't heal. Please don't heal. And they're like, huh? You've got to get it released. Now, how many of you seriously are like, I don't like that. Like I really, can anybody be honest with me? Like I don't like you. I don't like that. Okay, we can help you get over it. There's ways to get around it. But if you have that, what do you have to do? Truly, if you have it, what do you have to do? Ignore it, change your diet. Now here's what's amazing, watch this, watch this. Okay, what if uh, he goes, you know what? I'm gonna go vegan. I'm gonna eat only plants. It's gonna heal my diabetes. Will it? No. What if he says I'm gonna go to CrossFit and work out 17 hours a day every day of the week? I like CrossFit, but it doesn't fix diabetes. Does that make sense? Will it get rid of this? No, what will? Him waking up to that it's happening and allowing someone to help him to reset it. Does that make sense? So we did one adjustment, it's reset. How many of you would like to have that level of care of being done? Is this chiropractic? No. How many of you have been a chiropractor before? Seriously, I wanna see your hands. Okay, uh, did they do that for you? One adjustment right afterwards? Did they do it? Why don't they do that? Because they care about pain. They care about this, they care about this. <coughs> you feel better? You do? Oh, yes! Because you know what happens though? Oh my God, it's worse, oh it's so bad, oh it's so, so bad. And then they're like, I guess we can't help you. They didn't adjust you the right way. They did not adjust you the right way. There's no way humanly possible for you to heal worse after an adjustment, because we always heal after an adjustment. Now, might you be a little sore? If you do 100 push-ups right now, what will you be tomorrow? Yeah, but your muscles were like, finally, you started moving, finally. So they're gonna build up, right? And eventually, if you do it every day, what happens? You do 100 push-ups and be like, watch this, one arm, like a man, right? 
Okay, now, I have another one. Can you guys listen to this one? Are you okay with this? Okay, this is uh, Pam. You guys, you gotta hear this one. Pam's gonna blow your mind, ready? Here we go. Hey guys, I'm so excited. I have Pam here, and um, we have something incredible to share with you about what's been happening with their sugars. So I'm gonna let you share the story more just because it's, it's uh, so transformational, so. Okay, well I was diagnosed by my regular primary care physician of having diabetes type two. My sugar at that time was 396, and my A1C was 12.7 according to his test. And I came to see Dr. Arms because my doctor told me there was no hope. He immediately wanted to put me on metformin. I called him and said, can I just not take the medication or do something else? He said it was impossible. You have to take metformin. I said, can I do a diet and exercise, anything else? There's nothing else you can do. You have to take the metformin. And so I didn't feel that that was where God was wanting me to go. So I met Dr. Ernst on April the 19th. He ran his own blood test and showed that my blood work was 9.1. When I emailed him, I felt like I had no hope. And he reached out to me and he gave me hope. And I came to him and he shared with me how I could heal my gut, heal my back, and eat healthy and straighten everything out. And I, my success story is, is as of today, I got my blood work back and my A1C is 5.7. Yeah. I give God all the glory. I pray blessings upon Dr. Ernst's ministry because this is a ministry. I'm not just a person or a, a number. I am a sister in Christ to him and he cares about my whole health. And so let, let me ask this. When you were at your medical office, did they ever test your gut to see if there was a bacterial relationship to what was going on with your sugars? Did they run like a detox test to find out if you have toxins or any issues? Did they take x-rays of your spine looking at the nerves that go to your pancreas or to you know, the area of your intestines? Blood test only. Yeah, and so the challenge is, of course, in their world, there is no cure because they don't test for the cause. When you actually get cause tests done and you fix that, of course, the human body has the ability to heal itself. So what a great, great story. What would you say for those who are watching this video about if they have diabetes or even if they don't even know that they have diabetes, what would you say to somebody who's looking for a way out? I would come to Dr. Arms. He runs a full panel, gets all the answers instead of just a small view. He gets the whole panel done. So you do exactly where you're at. And then he gives you a plan fit specifically for you to get you to move forward to meet your goal of where you need to be wholly healthy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank yeah. you. So Thanks, guys. Yes. From like 12 to 5, right? So look, look, that's for, that's for him, not for me, right? I didn't heal her. You guys agree with that? I didn't heal her. I showed her what she's doing. Guys, she had all three of them. She was neurogenic, toxicogenic, and microbiogenic. That'd be the only way you'd be at like a 12, just so you guys know. Okay? Can you have all three of them? Yes. Can you just have one of them? Yes. Can you have two of the three of them? Yes. You really need to find out what you want. Okay, next, 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 next. Ready? Wouldn't you agree that the liver is somewhat involved in the processing of sugars? Okay, just so you know, your primary sugar filter is your liver. So first the pancreas makes insulin, yes. So you can have nerve to pancreatic block. You could also have nerve to liver block. Now, C1 nerve goes everywhere, just so you guys know, the vagus goes everywhere. Every organ in your body has C1 connected to it. So could the same pressure on this nerve cause someone to have high blood pressure? Yes. Could it cause them to have asthma? Yes. Could it cause them to have thyroid problems? Yes. Could it cause their big toe to be numb? Yes. I know that's wildly hard to understand because medicine is so fractionated, aren't they? Cardiologists, gastroenterologists, urologists, they're like, oh, we're, we're just small parts of a big being. No, we're an everything being. Do you guys understand? Your nerves control everything. So in the middle of your back, thoracic six through nine, shoulder blades, is where the liver is. You know how many type two diabetics tell me they're like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, man, it's just, mm. anybody? Like it burns. And you know what that means? Your spine's out of alignment. And you need to get your alignment back. So it would be the analogy of this. If you watch here, aren't all these fuses aligned properly in the on switch, right? Let me ask you guys this. If you had to diagnose the problem over here, doctors, where's the problem? Where is the problem? Somebody show it to me. Tell me when to stop. Now, what's wrong here? The switches are off. So let's say this goes to your washing machine. Now, understand this analogy. It goes to your washing machine. Will it work? No. Is there anything wrong with it? No. What's the problem? No, now watch. This might set you free. Is there anything wrong with your pancreas? No. no. There's no power going through. Is there anything wrong with your liver? No. There's no power going to it. Is there anything wrong with your heart? No. Power going to. Is there anything wrong with your thyroid? No. I know it's 
wild, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with you. And that should set you free. What's wrong is you don't have power flowing properly. Why isn't the power flowing properly? Because something switched you out of alignment. Now, would you agree that we might be able to see something like that on an x-ray? Yes? yes? Tell me if you would agree. That spine is pretty darn straight as a board, yes? Okay. What's going on here? It is a scoliosis. You know what? She goes, oh, I know I have it. I've had this for 20 years. And I'm like, hey, you want to get well? You got to fix the scoliosis. What does she tell me? What does she tell me? You can't fix scoliosis, doctor. Really? I'll agree. I can't, but you can. Did you know you can fix your own scoliosis? Yes. Yes. But what do you need to do? You need to know how to do it, yes? Yep. So if I, if I take her to a chiropractor, what are they going to do? Aren't they going to lay her down on the table and go, and then, now let me ask you a question. If you adjust from the right to the left and the left to the right, where'd you end up? Right where you were before. Shame on those chiropractors for not teaching you that you need to only get adjusted in a specific pattern. How do I want to adjust this person? I would want this segment to go which way? To the right and to the right only. Only. Does that make sense? Yeah. Only. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not. A lot of people look at this x-ray and they're like, shoo, woo, shoo, woo, you must be in a lot of pain, right? Like, man, that must hurt, right? No, no, didn't it, no, no pain in your back. Why? Watch this. Your nerves, if you cross section through them, are only 6% by volume pain receptors. 94% of what your nerves do is they make things work and they make things move. Do you understand this? Now watch. In order to feel a nerve being pinched, write this down, it must be pinched 41% or more. In order for you to feel a nerve that is pinched, it must be pinched at 41% or more. So translation is this. A spine that is completely straight, the nerves come out at every level, okay? And a spine that is bent like this, would you not agree with me that is a pinched nerve, yes? Okay, why do some people not feel that though? Because it's only pinched at 32%. Now, do you think a 32% block of power to an organ is palpable by your brain and your body? Oh yeah, but can you feel it? So because you believe pain tells you if you're healthy or sick, what will you do? Nothing about it. And then when someone shows it to you, you go, what the? Seriously, I have scoliosis? I don't, oh shoot, I don't feel it. Okay, you can't feel nerve damage until it's way too late. If you come to me and you're like, I've got sciatica going down my leg and my toes numb, I go, whoa, 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 whoa. That's over 40%. That's 50, 60, 70%. You're like, it's not a big deal, because I pop a pudding and it goes away. No, 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 no. It means you're losing motor control, muscles, and you're using, you're losing organ control. What do you guys care more about, pain or organ function? Yeah, yeah but no, you don't. You care more about pain because you cover it up. You care more about pain because you cover it up. Watch this. We can run a scan on your spine and find out where the nerves are pinched and it'll give us the percentage. Do you think that's pretty cool? Yeah. How would you like to know, all of you, right now, if you have nerves that are pinched to your heart, lungs, liver, spleen, pancreas, gallbladder, all the above, every nerve in your body goes to different spots. Where is the nerve damage in this person? Uh-oh, that's neurogenic diabetes. Can you see it? Can you see it? It's also neurogenic thyroid because that zone goes to the thyroid. Okay, here's the pancreatic zones. Does this person have neurogenic pancreatic insulin issues? No, you see it? They have the C1 issue. I'm sorry, liver. I'm so sorry, liver. Do they have the liver issue? No. Do they have the pancreatic issue? Yes. Do you see it? Okay. This is a test I run on every single patient, and we use it to see if you're improving. Improving, right? Because what happens? If you fix a nerve, shouldn't the, the scanner show that the pressure's less? How often would you guys like to be scanned? I'd like to do it every day, technically, but it's too much information. So we do it maybe every month, every two or three months. And then once it's good, then we, okay, we do it every six months, and then every year. You guys understand? Like, you can have these things done, it's just you didn't even know this technology existed, right? Right. Okay, that scanner costs $10,000. I have three of them, because we run them so often, okay? I don't care spending money, I'll spend money for you guys. I'll do it all the time. I have more money than I can even imagine. I give it away to people. We buy tests for people. We help people. We don't even charge for these things because they're bundled in and built in. Okay? Now, watch.
watch this. The microbiogenetic is a little harder to understand because a lot of people will say, what does my gut have to do with my sugars, right? Sorry for the uh, big test, but you get the idea? What does this have to do with my blood sugar, Dr. Ernst? Well, here's what they're actually finding out. The bacteria in your gut prevent you from becoming type 2 diabetic. Novel thought, right? The bacteria here prevent you from becoming diabetic. How do we know that? You guys are gonna blow your mind. There was a study done where they took rats that were genetically induced obese type 2 diabetic rats. Now think about this. Okay, genetically induced obese type 2 diabetic rats. And they had these rats over here that were super healthy, non-diabetic, real thin. This is gonna be gross, ready for this? They took the poop of these rats and they put it into the colons of these rats, and what happened? They all lost weight, their diabetes went away, and they looked just like those rats because they took the fecal waste of a healthy rat and put it in the intestines of an unhealthy rat. What were they doing? They took the good bacteria and they mixed it into the colon that didn't have those good bacteria. The bacteria took over the colon and fixed the genetic issue because there is no such thing as genetic diabetes. Do you see it? So if you were to take my stool and put it in your colon, your diabetes would go away. Like how many of you are gonna do that? Seriously. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what the research is saying though, and I hate to say it, some people have done that. Some people have done that. Now watch, ready? I'm not gonna ask you to do that. I'm gonna just ask you to clean out your gut. Now the problem is most of you have damage to your gut walls, so they spread apart. You guys heard this term leaky gut? Here's what it means for real, okay? It's not what you think. It's not like you're leaking inside. You're leaking bacteria and toxins and viruses through a membrane that should be so tight nothing gets through it back into your blood. What happens if bacteria gets in your blood? You get sick. What happens if um, virus particles get in your blood? What happens if stool gets in your blood? That's what a leaky gut is. Bits and pieces at a microscopic level of your stool is getting back into your blood and your body freaks out and reacts and your body will try to fill these holes to stop it and what does it fill it with? What does it fill it with? If you had to plug a hole in your body, if you were your body, what would you plug the hole with? Fat. So watch. People that have really bad guts have really big guts, even though they're vegans. You guys see this? This, the amount of fat here tells us how much the leak is going on because if you had no fat, you would have no leak. Does that make sense? So if you're like, I've got this belly that's gotta go, it's leaking, it's leaking. Now watch, if it's leaking and you go to CrossFit and you become a vegan, will you lose some of the fat from your intestines? Yes, but what will happen? Your brain will go, uh, idiot, I needed that. And put it all back. Seriously, it'll put it all back. Because it's like, well, if you wanna lose weight, fix your gut. Now how, how do I know that your body's telling you this, ready? A leaky gut shows up like this. Joint pain in the morning that is really bad but gets better as the day goes on. Anybody? That's a leaky gut. Eating food and having your nose run with a clear liquid is a leaky gut. Your body's telling you, but see, you don't know how to speak body language, not this kind of body language, body language. And if you guys can figure out how to read body language, you would go, oh my God, I know everything that's wrong with me. I have a leaky gut, my nerves are damaged, I'm toxic, and let me go fix it, and you would what? You would heal yourself, okay? So, what does the science say? This is old school, is it not? I mean, come on, 2003, a long time ago, yeah? Not really for, for text and stuff like that, but watch. Science says that what causes a leaky gut? Gluten. And where do we find gluten? Wheat. Wheat. So it's not just the genetic modification, it's the fact that there's gluten in there. Now this is where it gets crazy. They said that a gluten fragment will land on the cell of your gut and stimulate the secretion of something called zonulin, which lands on the neighbor cell and spreads it open for the purpose of letting gluten get into your blood. What does that sound like? What else does that? What else acts like that in your body? It starts with a B. Virus. Isn't it weird? What if I told you that gluten is a virus that was genetically modified to spread your gut apart and make you all leak? 
It's genetic engineering, guys. It lands on the cell, it's a protein, the protein spreads the cells apart. Do you think we can test for zonulin? Yes, we can. It's a super, uber, uber expensive test. Eight to nine hundred dollars to run a zonulin test. Why? Well, show cause. When zonulin is high, your gut is weak. Now, when your gut leaks, what happens? Well, everything gets inflamed. If you are now sensitive to a food, I had a patient say this once because I was like, always going to eat pizza. Always. It never bothered me. Pizza, I loved it. And now all of a sudden I eat it. My knees swell up. Sinuses explode. What do I need to do to eat pizza? Well, first of all, don't eat pizza. It's wheat and it's dairy married together with a sauce in between. It's pure poison for your body. I know you guys are like, oh, but I really like pizza. Can you make it with cauliflower crust and use a like a, an organic raw goat cheese or something that doesn't have that protein in it? And then eat your pizza, okay? Now watch. Once you don't fix these food sensitivities, did you know that food sensitivities are the precursor for autoimmune disease? Did you know this? If you keep eating the food you're allergic to, your immune system is eventually going to go, fine, do you want to do that? I'll play that game, and I'll knock that knee off your body. I'll knock the thyroid off your body. And see if that wakes you up to stop eating this stuff. Oh, no? Okay, fine, I'll knock the kidney off your body. Autoimmune disease is when you attack the cell. What is it caused by? Leaky gut. If you have an autoimmune condition, I guarantee you your gut's leaky. Autoimmunity is caused by leaky gut. Leaky gut's caused by gluten consumption, which is caused by you eating it. So you are creating your own condition. You guys understand? I know, trust me, I know. You're like, hey, how do I get out of here? I'm sick of hearing them. I'm, I'm the cause of everything. <laughs> so this is what it feels like. This is what it feels like to have a leaky gut. Take a photo, because I guarantee you, all of you are like, oh my god, look at this. That's me, and 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 that's me. And that's me. Right? What does it say right here? High blood pressure, high blood sugar, thyroid, high blood sugar. This is in the research. They're actually showing you research-wise. Sorry if you're taking photos. Research-wise. Now watch, watch. We have a scale in my office that you can stand on. Tell me when you're all ready. Eight million photos taken at once, right? We have a scale in my office that you can stand on, and it will look, it'll print off a report like this. Now I'm going to help you break this down super easy. How much does this person weigh? How much of their body is fat? Now, I want to just give you a visual. 45% of your body means from here up, they're all solid fat. And from here down, they're muscle, bone, tissue, and nerves. Is that good or bad? Bad to be 45% fat. Now, come over here. How much fat is in their leg? How much fat's in their leg? How much fat's in their arm, left, arm, trunk? Where's your trunk? Now, now watch, watch. 84 pounds of fat right here. How much on the whole body? 153 pounds of fat on the whole body. What percent is 84 of 153? 60-something percent. Write this down. If more than 50% of your total body fat is in your trunk, your gut is leaking, period. If more than 50% of your fat is in your gut, it's leaking. Now, how do we find this number? You have to stand on the scale. It's the only way for us to get your fat weight, not your total body weight. Does that make sense to you guys? We have to somehow rip you apart and weigh all of your fat and weigh all of your muscle and weigh all of your bones. And if we did that, you would be dead. So we let the scale do it for us. This is not an inexpensive scale. And I have two of them because we use it so often, okay? And I can show you how you guys can get this thing done for free. Look, I, I, I called Blue Cross. It's called the Tanita, Tanita Body Composition Scan. There's a code for it. I said, hey, Blue Cross, how much does it cost if I want to have somebody do this? They're like, $35. I was like, really? It's not like that, right? 35 bucks? Yeah. But if I ask you to do it 17 times over the next year, you guys are like, ugh. So I don't charge a dime for that. It's built into our care programs. You don't pay for it, and we run it for you, OK? Now, we can see numbers, and we can see things change. Now, here's a urine panel that goes to look now, is the gut leaking? Most important is this, Indican. See it? Indican indicates a gut leak. You guys tell me, is that marker high or is it high? OK, now these are bacterial markers. <coughs> so we see the small intestine is doing pretty good. Would you agree? Small intestine is from here up. Is there bacterial infections in the small intestine? Not really. What about the large intestine? Yeah. And then what does that say right there? Yeast. 
Ooh, they had a yeast infection in their gut and a bacterial infection there, what we call a CIFO SIBO. CIFO, fungal, fungal overgrowth, small intestine, large intestine, right? So fungal bacterial overgrowth. And their detox pathways are completely shut down, detox pathways. This is a microbiogenetic diabetic. Can you see it? Can you guys see this? Like, it's really not that hard. But the only way to see this is to run the test. It's a $1,300 test. How many of you would just be able to do it right now? Like, right, right? I'll pay for it for you. Would you guys be willing to let me do that? Yeah. One person, yeah. two people, three people. <laughs> More of you, right? Now, wouldn't you agree, you go to your MD and you say, hey, uh, can you test me for leaky gut? I had a patient do this. Mm -hmm. The doctor's like, literally, he goes, a leaky what? Now, do you know, they'll say to you that there's nothing in the research showing that a leaky gut exists. You guys ever heard of this? Who's going to their medical doctor and asked about leaky gut? Anybody? Don't they say? That is completely made up. Really? Ready for this? Really? Okay. Who is uh, responsible for publishing articles in, say, like the National Library of Medicine? Who typically publishes these kind of articles? Medical doctors and researchers, right? Right? Would you agree? Now tell me if you guys would agree with this. Your gut, the gut microbiome is potentially a target for prevention and treatment of the fancy phrase for high blood sugar, hyperglycemia in type two diabetics. Current human evidence supports it's a future possible treatment. Really? Change the bacteria in your gut and your type two diabetes goes away? Now, now hold on, you might say, well that's not leaky gut, Dr. Merckx, that's bacterial overgrowth, right? So what about this? Type 2 diabetes and the gut microbiome. The metabolites from the gut contribute to the barrier integrity, the tightness of the bowels, watch, and a compromised barrier leads to what? Leakage, leaky gut of inflammatory mediators such as systemic circulation gets into your blood and increases what? And when was this published? Print this off, take a picture, print this off and give it to your doctor and say, Shame on you for not reading your own research. Where is it published? In the, the, uh, the uh, journal of Gut Microbes. Here is the article you can throw down their throat and say, Dr. Leaky Gut does exist. Medicine has found it. The research is evident. And it says, if I tighten my barrier, my diabetes goes away. Please give me the drug that tightens my barrier. And what will they say? Huh? Huh? What article? Where? And then you know some doctors will go like this. Well, that's not the American Journal of Medicine. So I only read the American Journal of Medicine. What about a diabetic article from a diabetic journal? Do you think current diabetes? Do you think this might be worth reading? What does it say? Microbiome is a potential target treatment for type 2 diabetes. Translation, your gut will make you have or make you not have. Type 2 diabetes. Guys, this is huge, is it not? Like, I don't know about you, this should be like, your mind should just be going, <clears throat> now watch this, right? Oh, uh, you can't fix type 1 diabetes. Once you have it, you have it for life. You have to inject insulin forever. Really? What does this one say? Uh, it's possible that the microbiome led to the cause. Pathogenesis means the pathology or the creation of type 1 diabetes. We're now recognizing that people with type 1 diabetes have messed up guts. And uh, it might be worth us investigating the gut to see if it could be therapeutic in the future for type 1 diabetics. When was that? Last year. How long does it take for research to become the mainstream doctor's advice? Do you guys know? This is going to shock you. How long? 40 years. Your current, what we call doctor's standard of care is based off of research done in 1950 and 1960, just so you know. All of their current protocols are off research from 40 to 50 years ago. So when will a, type, when will a medical doctor say, you know what, fix your gut? In the year 2048, 58, sorry, 2058. In the year 2058, medicine is going to go, you know, we had it all wrong, and we need to fix your gut. And they're going to come up with a gut pill. Watch, they're going to come up with a genetically modified poop pill, and they're going to say it's by prescription only. 
Okay, ready? I only have a couple more and then we'll go for the Ready? I want you guys to listen to Chuck. Chuck's going to blow your minds. Ready? Here we go. My name is Chuck, and I've been a patient of uh, Dr. Ernst since late April. Just want to tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, I've been a diabetic for 12 years, and I came to Dr. Ernst and went started his program of uh, helping my spine, correcting my spine, healing my, uh, my uh, leaky gut, and they uh, detoxified it. Uh, before I came here, uh, I was on five different medications for uh, diabetes. My sugar, when I got up, even with those five medications, was 125 to 150 when I woke up. And when I ate, it would spike up to 240, maybe 300. Yeah. Supposed to be less than 140. But less now, after uh, being here, being under Dr. Ernst's uh, protocol, uh, I've lost 16 pounds. I have come off of three of my five medications for diabetes. My sugar, when I get up with those three medications no longer being used, is around 100. And even when I eat, it's only about 115, 120. Normal. And it's pretty level during the day. I'm just really excited about what's happening in the weight loss. Recently, I went to my own family doctor for a three month checkup and he was absolutely astonished at the figures when they did the test. My A1C was 6.3. It has never been that low in my entire life. I was so excited. As I left, my doctor said, Chuck, you have made my day. He said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So I encourage all of you out there that are here to listen to Dr. Ernst, to consider, to listen to what the information that he has and make the leap of faith like I did, step out so that you can take care of your own health, be your own doctor and take care of your own health. Thank you. And truly in my opinion, if you guys are asking me like, what would I want for you? And you, if you listen to my radio show, I say it all the time, right? You should be your own doctor. You should be the one to activate the healing inside of you. If you need help, let me help you. If you don't, just start doing everything that we just talked about today. I had uh, a patient come into my office last week, and she goes, look, I've been like, I've been trying to be a patient of yours for months. So I'm so excited that I'm here. And do you guys remember this? I was at the front desk, we were checking, we were letting her leave, and she's like, oh, just so you know, like I've been reading your website and listening to your radio show, and I'm only just starting, but I've already lost, what was it, 11 pounds? I lost 11 pounds just by listening to one of your radio shows and reading one of your articles, and I just did what it said to do. That's what I'm talking about. People who take action once they get information, okay? Did you know that there's a specific phrase in medicine called toxin-induced insulin resistance? You can Google this, and they'll say, yes, it does exist. What it means is that there is something inside the receptor. Now, according to a study that was done in 2012, 33% of all diabetes is known to come from toxins. Weird, isn't it? But they'll say, we have no idea what causes diabetes. And the research says, yes, we do. In 33% of the case, it's, there's a toxin associated. In 57% of the case, it's just you're eating way too much sugar. You're eating way too much sugar. Where are we eating sugar when we say we're not eating sugar? Wheat, corn, rice, soy, oats, and dairy, and fruit. You see it? You eat what you don't believe to be sugar because you haven't programmed your brain to believe that that is sugar. So it comes like this. We look to the research because that's what I am. By the way, just so you guys know, before I did what I do now, I did cancer research of all crazy things. I was trying to help people not get cancer and I was doing cancer research at the National Library of Medicine at the National Institutes of Health. I worked in the President's Hospital. It's called the Bethesda Naval Clinic. You guys heard of this place? Right, and for like five years I was doing phase one and phase two drug trials. I know, right? From the belly of the beast all the way up to where I am today. People were dying left and right from cancer. And as a medical student, I was like, oh my God, I want to help with cancer. Like I'll just go all the way to the top. Cancer is a big thing, nobody's fixed. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fix cancer. So I was doing research and trying to figure out why people were dying from cancer. And so I'm a researcher at heart. So I got out of that field, thank God. And uh, watch this, the association between ferritin and insulin resistance 
in a representative population. I'm gonna see if this will blow up. Ready? I want you guys to read this for me. This study <coughs> shows what? Significant correlation, meaning what? Cause and effect between serum ferritin, toxic iron in your blood, and the presence of, boom! It's in the research. It says specifically ferritin causes diabetes. Interestingly enough, the severity of the diabetes is associated directly with the amount of ferritin. Translation, the more ferritin you have, the worse your diabetes. Meaning, the less ferritin you have, the less diabetes you have. Do you guys see it? It's literally staring us in the face, but how many of you have been to PubMed.gov in the last month? Because <laughs> you get overwhelmed and you don't know what it means, right? So again, a real blood test would include this so we can see the number, okay? Write this down. If you're a male, it should be less than 150. Males. Every male should be writing this down. Ferritin must be less than 150. If you're a female, ferritin must be less than 100. 100. Okay, so 639. What is this? Neuro, I'm sorry, toxicogenic diabetes. Would you guys all, are we all in agreement? Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to get the ferritin out. How do we get ferritin out? We take a chelator. And you guys are all wondering, what's the name of it? How much am I supposed to take? Right, right, right? I'm not going to tell you because it's all based upon a hiatus. The chelation dose is based upon what that number is. You know, people come to me all the time, they're like, Dr. Marks, how much vitamin D should I take? And I would go like this, what is your vitamin D number? And they're like, oh, I have no idea. Well, how much am I supposed to take? How can I answer this? If you're at 100, you need maybe 1,000 units, but if you're at 15, you need like 100,000 units. How can I tell you what to do if you don't give me the info? Do you guys see it? Dr. Harris, just please tell me how to chelate. I want to get well. I need the number. I can't afford the test. I can't help you. I'm so sorry. Well, huh, can't you just tell me something to do? I, I, uh, I can't. Do you guys understand? If I can see it, I'll tell you what to do. So how about things like mercury and lead and thallium and all that stuff? Look what the research says. The metals in urine of diabetics are always mercury, lead, and thallium. So if a diabetic urinates out mercury, lead, and thallium, and a non-diabetic doesn't, what does that tell us? That they have those in their body, and that's causing the toxicogenic, yeah. This one says the disruptive effect of mercury is mercury interferes with your endocrine receptors. What is an insulin receptor? Is it not an endocrine receptor? So we have a receptor. Endocrine means hormone, yes? So insulin is a hormone, so can mercury get inside of there and stick to it and never let go. Yes, where do you guys get mercury from? Nope, from the fillings in your mouth. There is more mercury in one tooth than there is in 10,000 pounds of fish. Do you guys know this? There's more mercury in one tooth than in 10,000 pounds of fish. And you guys say stuff like, well, I gotta keep my fish consumption low, but you have four, five, six, eight, 10, 12, 20 fillings that are metal. Okay, what they are detecting, watch this, the pancreas is energetically connected to the teeth in the top back of your mouth. How many of you right now know that in the top back of your mouth you have a filling in those one or two teeth? Yep, and I guarantee you, you all have sugar problems. What happens? Well, the, if they drill a hole in this tooth and they put metal in it, doesn't that have a nerve in it? Won't the nerve absorb the metal and make it go to the brain and then cause the brain to become toxic and then create diabetes, create breast cancer, create thyroid problems, and create stomach issues? You guys know those four right there are taking over the world today. Right now in the US, the number one most prescribed drug is more prescriptions than anything else in the US is for what condition? Thyroid. Centroid just passed Crestor two years ago for the first time ever. 22 million prescriptions a month. 22 million per month. It surpassed heart disease. Thyroid is now the new epidemic going on in the US. Nobody's talking about it though. Why? Because we have fillings here and here. Stomach, spleen, pancreas, lower. The likelihood you have a filling here is really low. The likelihood you have a filling here is really high. You guys agree? Really, really high. So what do you have to do? You gotta get them out. You gotta get them out. Get the filling taken out, put in a non-toxic filling instead. 
Now I want to show you something again. See the prevalence of diabetes, the orange, right? I'm sorry, the uh, prevalence of diabetes is, I think the blue line. No, nope, that's cropped in a photo. Here it is, percentage of diabetes. The yellow, I was right. See there's 1976, right? Watch the blue, which is the amount of genetically engineered soy and corn, and then the amount of glyphosate Roundup sprayed. Is this one not one to one practically? <coughs> there's the proof that Monsanto is causing disease. Can you run a test to find out how much of Monsanto's Roundup is in your body? Yes. Now, I used to do this on everybody. Why don't I do this anymore? Because every single person that I tested, it comes back positive. And it comes back so positive that it's off the charts. So what we do now is we use better measurements. But can you run out and go grab this guy? It's called urinary melanoaldehyde. I called LabCorp about a, a year ago and said, hey, uh, if I send a patient, if I send him to get urinary melanoaldehyde, how much does that test cost? Somebody give me a dollar amount. They said, we don't have that test. LabCorp, national lab in the entire United States. We do not have that test. So I started digging around and I found a company called Systemic Formulas. And they have, uh, it's a little tiny pee test. It's a little tiny vial, collect your urine in the morning, you drip it inside of it, you shake it, and if it turns red, you have Roundup in your body. <coughs> Worth doing, but yeah, guess what? I'm gonna give it to each of you and you're gonna fail it miserably. Every single person that has run it fails it. But then as we get you well and we detox you, we run them later on, and what do we start seeing? Lighter pink, lighter pink, lighter pink, lighter pink, white. If it's blood red, ooh, toxicogen. Okay? Now, last one, and then I'm going to show you guys how we do what we do. Is that okay? This is a fun one, okay? <coughs> Debbie is going to make you think. Ready? Here we go. Hi, I'm Debbie Roberts, and I'd like to share with you um, what I've been experiencing through Dr. Hearn's program. About six years ago, I was diagnosed with type two diabetes, and I've been under a physician's care since then, following her dietary guidelines and taking metformin twice a day. Over the years, it's been an up and down battle as far as blood sugar levels. I wasn't seeing any progress and I was getting very discouraged, especially about nine months prior to starting Dr. Ernst's program, knowing that I may be dealing with diabetes for the rest of my life like my father and my grandmothers did. I was at the airport on a Saturday morning and I happened to come on Dr. Ernst's radio program. I was intrigued by what he had to say. And so I came home and Googled him I was in contact with him, and then um, soon after that, I started the program. And I knew this was right because my husband aligned with my desire to do this, and I knew it was in God's will. So I began the program, and I've seen through the chiropractic care I'm receiving and the exercises I do here at home, much improvement on my range of motion, my ability to get up and down off the floor, which is important because I like to play with my grandchildren, and um, less pain, and a better night's quality of sleep. I saw through the just the chiropractic care and exercises, my blood sugar levels starting to come down. It's been and since I started the detox program um, and the healing of my gut that I've seen my blood sugar levels drop to the point this past week, they were 120 or less. And I was thrilled on Sunday when I had a reading of 91. Now in the last three days, I've seen those 90 readings at least uh, once a day, if not more. I cannot tell you the difference it's made in my life. And I know that this is God's will. He calls us to be a holy living sacrifice to him. And so I would encourage you to carefully discern that this is God's will for you um, because it's been life changing for me. And I look forward to seeing um, normal blood level uh, counts every day. Thank you. And now, now by the way, Ms. Snow, she's like in 75, 80, 85 ish range. So here, here's what I want to kind of show, okay? 
these are by summary the three foundations that cause diabetes but let's go a little deeper technically they're the three foundations that cause anything you could write up here do you understand that i could write inability to lose weight those three i could write high blood pressure those three i could write cancer those three i could write no energy those three <coughs> Now, and again, I mentioned this before. For some of you, that sounds way too good to be true. Like, seriously, it's this easy? You just fix these three and everything else follows? But this is the way your body was designed to work. Okay, so what I want to show you is a quote that's quite famous, you guys probably know of, yes? Robert Frost says, uh, there's two roads to version wood, I take the one less traveled. Question, is it the road less traveled for you to figure out how to fix yourself? Is that the road less traveled? Oh yeah, not taking a medication and finding the cause and reversing the cause. Is that the road most traveled or is that the road least traveled? Least. So like the poet says, if you go the road less traveled, I promise you it will make the biggest difference in your life. I know for a fact by divine appointment you're here today because you had an option of not coming like those 15 or 20 people that said they were going to that didn't and you showed up. You guys understand? Like, I know for a fact that what I said today is for all of you, and yet at the same token, it was for one of you. One of you needed to hear something that I had to say. I pray for hours before I come to this thing to just be an empty shell and let God speak through me. Because there's no way that I can sit here and know everything that you guys need to say that he does. So please, I'm going to ask you to take an action today. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Would you agree? It doesn't make you do anything. But I can encourage you by saying it will make all the difference in your life. But some of you are nervous. Oh my God, how much is it going to cost? Oh my God, is my insurance going to cover this? Okay, so I'd like to digest this down. What I'm offering is the ability for you to get a leaky gut microbiome profile. We want to see what the bacteria, fungus, yeast, parasites, etc., look like in your gut. I'm offering to get a full toxicity profile done, blood work that includes all of our cause markers and about nine other pages of things just because I like to look deeper and find out what's going on with everything in you. And I'd like to include a neurological vagal nerve and spinal nerve test, okay? Retail costs, can I be honest with you guys? If you want me to do Blue Cross, MedCost, UHC, Medicare, you name it, we have three layers of the ability for you to come in to see me, okay? Real quick, a basic workup is coming to my office and doing only in-office testing. That is that urinary test that you pee in the vial and it will turn dark red, okay? This is us having you stand on the scale and seeing how much fat you have right here, okay? This is us taking x-rays and the thermal scan to see where the nerves are damaged. Are we all clear on that? Basic entry-level exam, Blue Cross MedCost UHC says you would have to pay $497 for that. If your deductible is $500, how much do you have to pay for it? All of it. If they say you have a $35 copay, how much do you have to pay of that? All of it, because that is a doctor's visit office exam copay. They will not cover this. But if you ask me to bill it, you will get a bill for this from your insurance, and then you will have to pay it, okay? If you go one level up and you add the blood test, ferritin, A1C, homocysteine, vitamin D, you guys understand? One more layer up, that's the retail cost through most insurance companies. If you do everything, everything, the microbiome profile, the, the urinary test, all of it, this is the retail price. Here's what I'm gonna do. My cost, my cost to do this is 297, uh, six, sorry, 697 and 497. I know they're all like weird numbers and why do we put this one in the middle? It was just the formatting and how it worked out, ready? If you want me to do the everything, my God, you guys are saving how much? Oh, yeah, like a little, like a grand. Because I will buy them for you. I will physically take my credit card out of my wallet and go And I have the capacity to do this for all of you. Literally. I have an, a no limit credit card. I can spend as much as I want. Okay, now next, if you do this one, then it's that price. You can see how it works? So you should have in your folders one of these guys. Can you guys dig it out for me? Give a blue folder, 
and that means that I haven't seen you in my office yet, or it's been more than like six months since I saw you last, right? More than six months since I've seen you last. Okay? Sorry for singling you out. Ready? Do you need to get retested if you have been six months or more in my clinic? Yes. Legally, yes. If you've never been to my office before, do you need to get tested? Yes, okay? What I'm asking you to do is see here what's included, but then turn the page over and tell me which one you want. And the secret is you must scratch through the price and write either 297, 697, or 497. Why do we have to do this? I hate to tell you this. It's the legality that you have to tell me you understand I'm giving you a discount. You're not paying the real fee. You know what the real fee is, and you're not having to pay all of it. Does that make sense? So if I was going to do the ultimate, what I would do is I would go like this. I would scratch through it. I would write 697. I would put a check here. I would sign this and put today's date so that I know you know what we're talking about. Does that make sense? I hate to say it, but legally you have to do that. Now, I would put my name and my date of birth for entering me in the system that we use, my phone number and my email so we can get in touch with you, and the most important, you see this box right here? Please tell me what day of the week and what time is the best for you to come to our clinic. So for example, Tuesdays at four o'clock, I don't work Tuesday, I could do that. So I'm gonna circle Tuesday at four o'clock, but I'm also gonna put another one just in case that I don't have a four available. Could I maybe do Wednesday at four o'clock? Yes, so I'm gonna put a star next to my first choice. I really, 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 really want Tuesday at four, but if you don't have it, I'm okay with Wednesday at four. You good? I mean, this is pretty simple, yes? Yet for some reason, probably 30% of you are gonna walk up there and it won't be circled, and they're gonna go, what day do you want? Okay, take a second, take a second and think and put them down. <laughs> Okay, now let me explain what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you guys a gift today, and it's really important you pay attention to this. I'm gonna give you all of the money back. Okay, so if you spend $6.97, I'll swipe my credit card, your payment in makes my card at a balance of zero, yes? And then as we go through this experience, you have three visits. First, in the office to get the testing run, yes? Second, to go over all of the results, you get me for a half an hour to say, hey, here's what we found, here's what's going on, and we're gonna do a therapy to you at no cost, and we're gonna give you a detox to do at no cost, and I'm gonna ask you to come back in like a week or so, and let's see how you responded to it, and then we'll sit and talk for up to an hour and say, okay, well, since you came in like this, and we found this, and you improved like this, here's what you should do to fix it, and so you get three visits at no cost. Does that make sense? And if on this date you say, oh my God, Dr. Nurse, this is amazing. I want to do this. Ready? Whatever you pay us, if you do the 697, <coughs> you have visit one, visit two, visit three. Right here I say, do this. And you know, there might be some things that you guys have to do, and I'll help you with pricing on it. We are going to give you this back as a credit. If your insurance says it costs X, we're gonna say, well, no, 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 it's X minus this. I'm gonna give you your money back. Does that make sense, everybody? So in the end, who paid for your test in the beginning? You. I did. That's what I would like to do for you. But if you want me to do that for you, I'm gonna ask you to do some things for me. Fill out some paperwork, send me a copy of your driver's license, because we can't order your labs without it, and do that now, as fast as you can. You're gonna go over there in the corner to where Angela is, you guys see Angela? Take that sheet of paper, go to her and say, this is the level of testing that I want to do. She will swipe your credit card, you can use an HSA if you have them, flex, debit, credit, check card, whatever, and then you'll schedule your appointment, you guys understand this? and then they'll give you a link. It's all digital. You can go in the lobby and fill it out right now. Right now! You can just do, 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 in seven minutes and we'll have your paperwork today and just take a picture of your driver's license today and email it us today and then you're gonna call on Monday saying we got everything we need. Can you please swing by and pick up your lab? Does that make sense? 
And the reason I'm doing this is it takes 14 days for these tests to come back. So all of you are gonna to wanna to go, hey, I wanna meet with you guys as soon as possible, right? So get the labs done as soon as you can. Is that okay? Are we okay with this? Now some of you are gonna go, oh, Captain Ryan, do I have to pay today? Yes. Because I have no way of following up and going, okay, do you remember that? What's gonna happen is like, you guys are gonna cause three, four, five day delays and stuff. My staff's gonna be running around like crazy trying to get you on the phone. Trust me, we've done this. We would say, oh yeah, you wanna call on Monday? Well, sure, sure. We call on Monday, you don't pick up. Then you call on Tuesday, we don't pick up. You call on right. Thursday, we don't pick up. Where are you? What's going on? Why didn't you just do it at the seminar? Okay? Look, put on your credit card if you have to, you can pay it off later. You guys understand? But I only want you to do it if you want to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we all good with this? Yeah. Okay, do I need to go through this again? Basic is in office, gut test, urinary toxic test, an x-ray, and all three visits. The ultimate is the everything test, everything. The premium is you going, you know, like, if I could just get the blood test in the red. I do this because I know not all of you could say 697 right now today, let's do it. But some of you might be like, yeah, yeah, 297, I can do that. Does that make sense? Okay, so do this for me. Slash through the one you want, write that price instead, and then all you have to do is stand up, I'm going to check with my team. Are we okay? All right. And that's how you fill it out. Sorry. See how you would like start with the times you want? Six and three. Real quick. Okay, real quick. Oh, this slide's not there. Hold on. I'm going to quiz you guys. Okay. Ready? I said I was going to do four things in the beginning, right? I was going to tell you what causes diabetes. What causes diabetes? Ferritin's one toxic gut and spine, right? Toxic gut and spine. What are the tests that find those? X-ray, blood test, urine test, okay? If you do that and you fix it, that's the one thing that lets your body heal. You guys see it? The one thing. So thank you for coming today. Take a moment to fill out the sheets if you guys want to do it. Check with Angela and have an awesome Saturday. You guys have a good time? Thank you.